Section 1 So they took up Yonah and cast him into the sea. Here Rabbi Yossi explains the hidden meaning of the biblical story of Yonah and the whale and the nature of the symbols used in the story. We learn that the soul is judged each night while we sleep and that this judgment is twofold. People are not judged according to the evil that they are destined to commit but rather for the good that they have done and will go on to do the question of whether the Creator takes pleasure in. Punishing the wicked is then raised in answer. It is pointed out that all human beings have a predetermined amount of evil they are allowed to commit. Once this limit passed, there is pleasure at their demise. The relevance of this passage, the universal law of cause and effect, is deeply embedded into our reality. For every negative action, there is an equal negative reaction. The concept of time, however, creates a separation between cause and effect in our physical world when man commits a negative. D time delays the inevitable consequences. Repercussions from wrongful actions appear at a later date, creating the illusion that these repercussions are random events. Our negative inclination then tempts us to point the finger of blame at God because the original cause, our negative action, is forgotten and hidden somewhere in the past. A reading of this section makes us more keenly aware of our actions and the judgments they invariably bring, arousing a stronger intention to ardently walk it. Path of Righteousness 1 and Sarah's life was a hundred year and twenty year and seven years. Beersheet 231 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion with the verse. So they took up Yonah and cast him into the sea and the sea ceased from its raging. Yonah 115 We have to examine this text carefully. Why did the sea rage upon Yonah and not the earth? Namely the Mukba called earth. He was leaving the land so that the Shechinah would not hover above him. In other words he was running away from the land of Israel from the secret of the Mukba. If so why did the sea cease and when he went away and not the land from which he ran to? Rabbi Yossi answers that the verse was accurate for the sea resembles the firmament and the firmament resembles the throne of glory. For that reason the sea grabbed him and received him in its midst. He was fleeing from the sea namely from the prophecy that is drawn from the Mokin of the Mukba which is an aspect of the sea thus the sea raged upon him not the land he was. Cast into the sea to return him to the prophecy from which he was fleeing three. So they took up Yonah and cast him into the sea. We learned that when they cast him into the sea and immersed him to his knees, the sea calmed. When they lifted him, the sea raged the deeper they immersed him. The calmer the sea became until he said, Take me up and cast me into the sea. Yonah 112. Immediately they took up Yonah and cast him into the sea. For when he was thrown into the sea, his soul soared and ascended to the king's throne to be judged. When his soul was returned to him, he entered the mouth of that fish which died and later came back to life. Five come and behold, when a man goes to sleep each night, his soul leaves him to be judged before the king's court. If it merits life, his soul is returned to this world. Six the judgment is twofold for man is not judged for the evil he is destined to commit. For Elohim has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Beersheet 2117 is written not in. The future tense you should not say that man is judged only for the good he has already done rather he is rewarded for his present good as was said above and he is also judged for the good he will do in the future he is saved for their sake as they said even though he is now wicked the holy one blessed be he does good with all people and does everything to benefit all therefore he does not sentence man for the evil he is about to do hence man is judged before the holy one blessed be he who knows the future seven come and behold once they cast Yonah into the sea it is written and the sea ceased stood from its raging this is the supernal sea the mukva it stood where it was for when anger calms down it stands when judgment is passed upon the world that court namely the mukva is like a pregnant woman experiencing severe labor pains when she gives birth the panic ceases similarly when judgment is passed upon the world it does not come or rest until justice is administered to the wicked that it rests holy standing in its place and perfectly maintained this is what the verse meant by the words but when the wicked perish there is jubilation Mishle 1110 this has already been explained 80 then asks about the verse but when the wicked perish there is jubilation is it not written have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die Yashiskel 1823 this would mean that there is no pleasure for the holy one blessed be he when judgment is administered to the wicked he answers before their measure was filled the holy one blessed be he did not have pleasure that the wicked should die but now after the measure is full when the wicked perish there is jubilation section 2 and Duma rises and receives the reckoning the Zohar describes disturbing details concerning the fate awaiting the wicked at the time of the resurrection of the dead emphasizing the urgent need for all of us to replace our bad deeds with good once immediately the relevance of this passage intellectual blockages in our consciousness prevent us from completely accepting and beholding the truth of the world to come and the gravity of our erring actions though we might accept the notion of a creator and other spiritual principles on a purely intellectual level internalizing and living these truths is a much more difficult task and the basis of our spiritual work the intent of this passage is to remove impediments and doubts opening our eyes to spiritual truths and stimulating greater awareness as we become more devout in our pursuit of righteousness replacing the bad we have done in this world becomes an intrinsic part of our nature and this process is furthered by the light emanating from this portion to sift at end of nine and Sarah's life was the body of the mission namely its essence was long and is now abridged we who are versed in the mission were close to the inner side of the great and heard a voice that travels down from above and expands throughout the world this voice uproots mountains and smashes strong rocks namely its illumination uproots and smashes all the clip great spirits rise and ears are open ten as the voice travels to three places it says cut off a portion how the still ones who are still sleeping maintain their guard and stand in position the king the guards the gates as the ruler over many armies stands by his post eleven nobody notices or knows that the book is open and is written in by a name and doom arises to receive the reckoning the dwellers of dust namely the wicked go back outside the good part the central column that is yes which is called good approaches to be counted among them but they do not wish for rolling and reversing twelve because they do not want the rolling and reversing they fall and do not come back to life thus the wicked are wiped from the book of Duma, who then shall claim them at the time of the resurrection of the dead as it is said that at the time of the resurrection the angel Monotron will receive a note at the cemeteries from Duma but who will claim those wicked who are not accounted for in the reckoning of Duma at the resurrection and who will care for their accounts this alludes to the harsh clipper named Sikhan who does the reckoning and corresponds to Duma for Duma means silence while Sikhan means conversation or talking woe to them woe to their lives woe to their pains for them the verse says let them be blotted out of the book of the living Tehillim 6929 end of Tisiphtet endum section 3 he who tells a field is a king there is a hidden meaning in the mention of Sarah's exact lifespan in the Torah for such details are given for no other woman nor does any other woman have a portion of the scriptures devoted to her name as Sarah does the symbols employed by passages concerning Sarah are pointed out and explained along with the meaning of various Statements that cannot be unlocked without the key of Kabbalah we learned that like Abraham Sarah did not in any way cling to negative inclinations this earned supernal life for herself her husband and later her son the relevance of this passage man on his own does not possess the inner power necessary to eradicate the dark side of his nature scriptural giants like Abraham and Sarah however are generators of such spiritual forces their existence in this physical realm and their presence in the Torah serve as a wellspring of this energy from which all generations can draw Sarah's grace and godliness together with the energy of supernal life reach us through the medium of the Aramaic words comprising this passage 13 and Sarah's life was he asked of all the women in the world why is Sarah the only one whose death is mentioned in Torah Rabbi she answered this is not so for it is written and Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath Beersheet 3519 and Miriam died there the Midbar 201 and Deborah Arabica's nurse died, Beersheet 358 and the daughter of Shuei Huda's wife died, Beersheet 3812 The death of many women is mentioned in the Torah 14 Rabbi Yossi responded but it is not written of them as it is written of Sarah of whom it is said and Sarah's life was 127 years old These were the years of Sarah's life, Beersheet 231 No other woman's days and years were specified as they were for Sarah Furthermore none of them has a portion of the scriptures devoted to them as does Sarah There is an esoteric reason for this in the scriptures Sarah's days and years are specified but the secret is that the days and years of all men depend on this grade This means that the Mokin which is the secret of the lifespan of Sarah is alluded to in the number 
in her which is why the Shechinah is connected only to a tilled field. 17. Another explanation A king is a woman who fears Hashem as it is written, a woman who fears Hashem she shall be praised. Mishlei 3130. This is the Shechinah. A tilled field is a strange woman, namely the other side as it is written that they may keep you from a strange woman. Mishlei 75. For there is a field and there is a field, there is a field in which all blessings and holiness dwell as it is written like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed, namely the Shechinah, and there is a field in which destruction and defilement, extinction, killings and war reside, namely the other side. This king, namely the Shechinah, sometimes tills the second field, the other side as it is written. For three things the earth is disquieted and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. Mishlei 3021. In this case, heaven forbid the field of the other side inherits the Shechinah and the light of the Shechinah is covered and Darkened until it is purified and joined CEIRN and above 18. This is the purpose of offering the goat on the first day of the month when no blessings dwell upon the second field, the other side as it is separated from the holy king, the Shechinah, when that field is tilled for the other side, then it is written, For he found her in the field, and the betrothed maiden cried out, but there was none to save her. Devarim 22 27. The field is the other side. American Samoa has been explained. 19. Come and behold. Chaba came into the world and clung to the serpent. He injected impurities into her, and she brought death to the world and to her husband Sarah, then came and went down into the place of the other side, but she rose again without any clipot clinging to her, as it is written, and Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had. Bear 131. When Nosh came to the world, it is written that he drank of the wine and was drunk, and he was uncovered within his tent. Bear 921 20. Because Avraham and Sarah did not cling to the other side, Sarah earned supernal life for herself, her husband, and her son after her. This is the meaning of the verse. Look at the rock whence you are hewn, Avraham, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug out, Sarah. Yeshayah 511. Therefore it is written, and Sarah's life was, for she merited all the years. It is not so for the rest of the women, for it is not written, and Shabbat's life was, and so on. Sarah clung to life, therefore her life was her own section, for he who is small and he who is great. The inner meaning of Sarah's age as cited in the Torah relates to the importance of approaching life with reverence and humility, for the Creator delights in those who transcend pride and self-interest, raising them in stature, whereas he diminishes those who inflate themselves with self-importance and vanity. Greatness in the world above is attained by behaving with humility and selflessness here in the Physical realm the relevance of this passage when people succumb to the demands of their ego preoccupying themselves with affairs in the material world they receive immediate but short-lived gratification and rewards their self-love deepens and their hearts harden in contrast spiritual accomplishments do not gratify the ego for this reason humility and selflessness are more difficult to kindle though their rewards are far greater and long-lasting Kabbalah teaches that the eternal world to come is not somewhere in the future but is readily attainable here and now according to our degree of spiritual transformation a reading of this section helps us to resist pride and arrogance by raising our awareness of their consequences in the physical and spiritual realms to Sifta 21 happy is he who makes less of himself in this world how great and high he is in the eternal world the head of the Yeshiva spoke to that effect saying that whoever is small in this world is great in the eternal world he who is great in this world is small in the eternal world as it is written and Sarah's life was a hundred year a hundred which is a large number is followed by the word year for it is lessened to a year seven which is a small number was greatly increased for it is followed by the word years come and behold the holy one blessed be he only makes greater the person who lessens himself he diminishes only the person who makes himself great happy is he who diminishes himself in this world how great he is above in the eternal world end of Tisipta Addendum 22 this paragraph does not belong here it belongs to another portion where it is explained section 5 and Sarah's life Sarah's life is connected to the Mokin another term for spiritual light and the secret of tense that are contained within the dimension of Bina the number 37 appears frequently here this was its hox age at the time of his binding for example and it was because of his binding that Sarah died the angel of death appeared before Sarah and told her that Abraham was about to sacrifice their son these events convey the various levels of spiritual light that Sarah's life revealed in this world the relevance of this passage the metaphysical forces embodied by Sarah are instilled within us through thoughtful meditation upon these verses 23 and Sarah's life was all this life is above in by a hundred year refers to Keter above 20 year is Chakma and Bina above the seven years are the seven lower Svirat above this is the secret of the first three and the lower seven Svirat of Bina where Sarah received life which is Mokin Rabbi Shimon said come and look at the secret of all this why is the number seven followed by the word years while all other numbers are followed by the word year 24 the hundred year includes everything namely Keter which includes all ten Svirat each sphere comprises ten n Together they comprise 100 for there is included the highest and most secret place of all which is Eric Enpin with the 100 daily benedictions meaning that it daily gives the abundance of a 100 benedict ions upon Malchut from the 100 Svirat in Eric Enpin is the secret of Keter of Atzalot also the 20 year which are Chakma and Bina include Eric Enpin the most concealed of all for that reason it is written here in the singular which is the secret of Unison for a thought and a jubilee habubal the secret of Chakma and Bina never separate from each other as the first three Svirat are joined to each other as 125 but the seven years which are the seven lower Svirat of Bina are separated from each other and from that which is hidden above Eric Enpin although everything is united and all are equal the lower seven pertain to judgment and mercy in many aspects and paths this is not so in the first three Svirat of Bina for Eric Enpin is Enclosed in them above the chest where there is no judgment at all for that reason it is written seven years and not seven years as with the first three Svirat the whole ten Svirat the first three and lower seven are called light therefore it is written and Sarah's life was for it existed it was created substantively and existed above in the ten Svirat of Bina 26 Rabbi Shia said that it has been explained why the death of Sarah is written rather than that of the other women. Its hawk was 37 years old when he was bound and because he was bound Sarah died as is written and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Bear she 232 from where did he come from Mount Moriah where he was binding its hawk the 37 years from the time that its hawk was born until the time he was bound where the life of Sarah for Avaya he was is 37 years in numerical value the years from its hawk's birth to his binding in order to mention that Sarah's death is mentioned in the Torah. Section 6 And the cows took the straight way. The meaning of this difficult scriptural passage is expounded by Rabbi Yossi. We learned that while they carried the ark, the cows were able to sing, although this gift vanished as soon as they no longer performed this work. Rabbi Shia explains that a psalm of David referring to a new song refers to a time when the psalm or Holy Spirit or Mukba, that is our physical world, also known as Malchut, will glow with the light of the sun, which itself is a coded reference to the concept of Mashiach. It is after this that the resurrection of the dead takes place, a time when the world will be renewed and set free from death's rule. The relevance of this passage, a cow, is both a metaphor and physical expression of an intense desire to receive in view of this cows are seen as powerful tools for attracting spiritual energy. Thus, red meat is a recommended dish for the first meal of the Shabbat since the internal energy of the meat serves to Draw down the light of the Creator the Torah's parchment which functions as an antenna to arouse metaphysical forces is produced from the skin of a calf the Zohar therefore uses the cow as a symbol for man's own insatiable desire to receive for the self alone and the image of a singing cow reveals a creature rising above its inborn nature this power emerged the moment the cows began transporting the ark and the scrolls contained inside here the Zohar alludes to the Torah's ability to help overcome innate immoral tendencies and self-seeking desires when mankind has completely removed all his evil inclinations death will be removed from the landscape of human existence world peace and fulfillment will be eternally achieved signified by the Zohar's reference to the light of the sun which represents Mashiach and ability to hasten the personal and global redemption is awarded to us by means of these verses and their corresponding spiritual influences we remove the force of death from our lives bear in mind the fact that death can refer to the demise of a business, the end of an important relationship, or the collapse of our emotional well being. 27 Rabbi Yossi began with the verse Asamo Singh have Shiru to
30. Rabbi Shia said that it is written there is nothing new under the sun. Kahila 19. But lo, the song is new and under the sun, for it will be under the sun. What is this new song? It is the moon which is the mukba, for then the moon will be new under the sun, meaning that its light will become again like the light of the sun, which is Zeir and what is meant by the phrase IT will be new under the sun. IT is the meaning of the verse, for he has done marvelous things. What are these marvelous? Things they are, his right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. This is the secret of his right and left hands. Jesus and Bura have gained him the victory. For whom did they gain victory? For the great that sang the song, the Holy Spirit, which is the Mukba. The Mukba was supported by right and left, as it is written, have gained him the victory. Therefore, his right hand gained him victory. The great called song, namely the Holy Spirit, which is the Mukba, whose light will be as the light of the sun. When will that be? When the dead of the world rise from the dust, and what has not yet been done in the world will be new. Thirty-one. Rabbi Yossi said, When the Holy One blessed be, he takes revenge on the world for Israel. He will sing this new song, namely at the coming of Mashiach, which is not the time of resurrection. For after the coming of Mashiach, the dead of the world will rise from the dust, and the world will be completely renewed and will be different, and that death will not rule. The world as it had since the serpent brought death to all defiled the world and darkened the faces of men. Section 7 And I will put enmity between you and the woman. This troublesome phrase uttered by the Creator in the Garden of Eden refers to the unbridgeable gulf between the godly and the godless of this world which will never be made whole as long as the serpent of death retains his power. We also learn how seven of the Sphirot create and sustain the days of man in spite of all the misery they cause the wicked are ultimately erased as if they never existed while the righteous enjoy eternal life. The relevance of this passage without the light of the Zohar, the inner meaning of the Torah remains obscured by confusion and misunderstanding the work of deciphering the language of the Torah is itself a step towards spiritual growth by endeavoring to comprehend the Torah's mysteries. We earn spiritual light and fulfillment in particular the Zohar. Clarifies the significance of women in Torah whose meaning is always spiritual and never merely literal thus the term man refers to the upper spiritual realm and the desire to share while woman denotes our physical realm and the desire to receive spiritual light arising from the upper world can only illuminate our lower world when our evil inclination termed the serpent of death is conquered and our character transformed man's evil tendencies are the lifeblood of the serpent as long as our negative aspects remain within us the angel of death will prevail over our physical existence we must learn to loathe our evil inclination to have enmity for our own desire to receive for the self alone in this particular passage we acquire strength for building a deep aversion toward these negative traits 32 come and behold it is written and I will put enmity between you and the woman Bereshit 315 he asks what is enmity have he replied that it is as written they pass away with Swift have ships of 926 for among the ships sailing in the great sea some called enemy ships are the ships of the serpent sailing amongst them 33 the phrase between you and the woman refers to the woman who fears Hashem Mishlei 3130 Malchut the words and between your seed refer to the rest of the heathen nations the seed of the serpent while and her seed namely Israel means the seed of Malchut he shall bruise your head is a reference to the holy one blessed be he who will remove the serpent from the world as it is written he will destroy death forever Yeshayah 258 and also I will cause the unclean spirit to pass out of the land Zechariah 132 34 the word head means in the future when the dead will live for then the world will be maintained by the head that means the first three Sphirot the supernal world will shine upon it and you shall bruise his heel means now in this world before all is perfected the world is not whole as long as the serpent bites the world and darkens the faces of the people. 35 Come and behold, the days of man were created and sustained by the supernal grades, namely the seven Sphirot, Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadiyazid, and Malchud. Once they do not exist by these grades, as it is written, the days of our years are 70. Tehillim 9010. There is no other grade by which to be maintained. The number 70 corresponds to the seven Sphirot, each comprising 10. For this reason, their pride is but trouble and wretchedness. Zechariah 132. And then it is as if they never existed. 36 But the days of the righteous are eternal. They live longer than 70 years because they receive from the supernal mazel, which adds life over 70 years as much as they want. This is as written, and Sarah's life was, and these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived. Bereshit 257. If you say it is also written of Yishmiel, and these are the years of the life of Yishmiel. Zechariah 1317. Although he was not. Righteous, this is only because he repented, therefore it is written, These are of his days as of Abraham. Section 8 Your eyes did see my unshaped flesh. Here we learn how the three prayers recited by a traveler can be embodied in one blessing. Then Rabbi Yehuda teaches that all of our deeds, good and bad, are recorded in a heavenly book. Knowing this reveals the importance of praying before embarking on any action. Rabbi Bo and Rabbi Yitzhak next debate the meaning of unshaped flesh and how the special state applies respectively to David and Adam. Unshaped flesh refers to the desire to receive for the self alone, which is akin to an animal's primal desires. We learn why no one was left who bore a resemblance even vaguely to the original Adam before the sin. Adam was a being of untold spiritual and physical beauty, which man later attempted to use for negative purposes. Rabbi Yehuda goes on to explain that the gifts of the Creator are given solely to Support spiritual goals if a man takes pride in his wealth or his children instead of using them in divine service he will ultimately be destroyed by them so it is with the beauty of Adam which the creator gives in order that a man can become still more devout and connected to the law those who fail to keep pure what the creator has given are soon driven from the world we are told that each night is divided into three shifts when the soul of man leaves the unshaped flesh of his body to be examined by the holy one on three separate issues if the soul fails this test Rabbi Shimon is quoted by Rabbi Yehuda as saying it is ejected from this divine realm great emphasis is placed on the fact that every single one of our actions is seen and recorded therefore nothing should be done without due care for its consequences the relevance of this passage man's nature is to regard wealth and luxury as prized attributes all of us are inclined to place more value on physical beauty and External appearances and on the intangible inner qualities of life intellectually we might accept the ideal that the only possessions worth having are those that cannot be bought and sold but living a life that truly embodies this ideal is a formidable task for the ego holds sway over all our thoughts and actions the spiritual intent of this segment is to keep our consciousness focused on the light of creator even during sleep the spiritual light that emerges here makes us more cognizant of our actions and their repercussions and helps us value and appreciate life's real treasures midrash hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 37 and was bear 231 our sages began with the verse come my beloved let us go forth into the field let us lodge in the villages sure hasherim 713 the sages have taught that a person who is traveling should recite three prayers the obligatory daily prayer the prayer for protection on the way and a prayer to return home in peace the Recitation of these prayers does not require three benedictines for it can be done in one blessing as we have learned that everything a man asks can be included within the blessing. Blessed are you, O Eternal, who hears our prayers. 38. Rabbi Yehuda said that all of man's deeds, both good and evil, are written in a book in the supernal world and that each man will be judged according to them. For we have learned from Rabbi Yehuda who quoted Rabbi that the verse suffices which reads your eyes did. See my unshaped flesh. Tehillim 13916. It means that the shapeless flesh refers to the body which does not care about the world to come. Your eyes did see everything it did since you have looked carefully at it. For in your book all things are written of it to be judged in the world to come. Therefore it behooves man to hasten to pray before he acts which may bring him good. 39. Rabbi Yitzhak said that a man does not transgress only he who is a shapeless matter and is not a man transgresses. This is a man who cares not for the needs of the holy soul, he behaves like a beast which does not care or no Rabbi Bo asked Rabbi Yitzhak was David called a shapeless matter, namely he who cares not for the soul because it was he who wrote the verse. Rabbi Yitzhak replied that Adam said, Your eyes did see my unshaped flesh, for unshaped flesh means matter whose shape is not yet finished. He said that before you gave me my soul when I was still unshaped flesh, your eyes sought to create men in my image, for in your book all things are written, for it will be written down who they are in name. The days
Keep the way of Hashem to do justice and judgment. Bear sheet 1819. If he does not do so but instead takes pride in them, he is hurt by them as it is written. No great grandchild has he and no grandchild among his people. Eof 1819. Similarly, when the Holy One blessed be, he gives the good and supernal beauty of Adam, he gives it to them so they will keep his commandments and abide by his wishes. If they instead take pride in it, they will be hurt by the beauty with which they were blessed. 42. Rabbi Yehuda said that when the Holy One blessed be, he first created Adam while he still was unshaped flesh and had no soul. He said to the angel who was assigned over the images of man, Look and shape in this form. Six men, Shimshan, Shal, Asayel, Yeshia, Hud, Sitiahu, and Avshalom. This is the meaning of the verse. And begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Shitbeer Sheet 53. The Aramaic word should mean six and refers to the six people mentioned. 43. Rabbi Yitzhak said that the Holy One blessed be, he created these six men from the same dust that was used to create Adam. The words and called his name Shit is derived from the Aramaic word Shita, which translates as six. It means that he created six men. This is the meaning of and begot in his own likeness after his image. But from the same dough that his unshaped flesh was created, therefore it is written, Your eyes did see my unshaped flesh, which means that you looked well to create in his image for in. Your book all are written means that those who did not keep what the Holy One blessed be he gave them were driven from the world. 44 In relation to this Rabbi Yehuda quoted Rabbi saying that the night is divided into three shifts of four hours each during each shift the Holy One blessed be he has a special matter of interest with man it is when the soul leaves him and the unshaped flesh namely the body remains asleep in his bed the soul ascends each night before the Holy One blessed be he. And he deals with it every shift Rabbi Yitzhak said those above are happy with it if it has merit if not it is pushed out section 9 to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her through the Rabbi's Kabbalistic discussion of the relationship between soul and body we explore the allegorical nature of the Torah stories and characters for example Abraham represents the righteous soul after it has departed this world while Sarah represents the physical body left. Behind next we are informed of what occurs immediately after death the soul usually revisits and mourns its body for seven days before ascending to the higher world in the case of a wicked person however the soul may find itself bound to the earth and the discarded body for up to a year but at the death of spiritually advanced people such as Abraham the holiness of the body itself merits special protection until the time when all the dead shall rise from their dust this phenomenon we discover. Explain several otherwise baffling passages of scripture the relevance of this passage the Torah's message and the Zohar's mystical insights are intended for the here and now so that our future may be peaceful and secure by gathering the forces released through the name Abraham and these revered words of wisdom we elevate our physical body to a higher level of spiritual purity 45 Rabbi Yehuda stated that Rabbi asked why is it written I charge you O daughters of Jerusalem if you find my Beloved that you tell him that I am sick with love. Sure Hasherim 58 Rabbi Pincha said that Rabbi Yehuda responded I charge you O daughters of Jerusalem is what the soul says to the souls who are worthy of entering Jerusalem above they are called daughters of Jerusalem for having the merit to enter therefore the soul says to them I charge you O daughters of Jerusalem if you find my beloved which is a reference to the Holy One blessed be he Rab said that this is the splendor of the other. Mirror tell him that I am sick with love to rejoice in his splendor and to sit often in his shadow Rabbi Huna said I am sick with love because of the passion the longing I feel for everything in the world therefore I am sick 46 Rabbi Yehuda said that this is the love the soul has for the body when the body dies as when Sarah's life was it is written and Abraham stood up from before his dead Bereshit 233 Rabbi Yehuda said that according to the Rabbi it is written in the previous verse. And Sarah died in Kiryat Arba that is Chevron in the land of Cna and in 247 Rabbi Yitzhak referred to Rabbi Yochanan as stating that the Holy One blessed be he created Adam and then inserted in him four things that are divided in the body Rabbi Yehuda said that are connected to the body while Rabbi Yitzhak said that are divided in the body each is separated to its element when man leaves this world Rabbi Yehuda said they are connected to the body during its life namely as it is written and Sarah died which refers to the body in Kiryat Arba the city of the four these are the four elements the words that is Chevron mean that they were connected in the body during a person's lifetime Chevron is derived from the word Shiver connected in the land of Cna and means in this world the world in which man dwells for a short period of time 48 and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her Bereshit 232 we are taught that the soul of man visits the body. For seven days and mourns for it this is the meaning of only when his flesh is upon him does he feel pain and while his soul is within him does he mourn. Neo 1422 similarly Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Abraham came refers to the soul while to mourn for Sarah refers to the body. 49 Rabbi Yitzhak said that the body rests in peace and lies in its grave when the soul has merit and rises to its high place this is referred to in the verse he that walks in his uprightness shall enter in peace to them that rest in their graves. Yeshua 572 who is it that walks in his uprightness Rabbi Yitzhak says that it is the soul that goes upright to Eden that lies concealed in wait for it. What does this mean Rabbi Yehuda says this is why Nikoka his uprightness is written with the letter hey if it has no merit and deserves punishment it walks about desolately and visits the body and the grave daily 50 Rabbi Yossi said that the heart bone namely the femur. That was hit and dislocated moves here and there with its stench coming and visiting its place for twelve months so does the soul that is worthy of punishment it goes out in the world visiting its place in the world and the graveyard for twelve months fifty one Rabbi Yehuda said come and behold the verse and Abraham stood up from before his dead Rabbi Abba raised a difficult point we learned that when the soul is in supernal complement namely in by the letter he joins it and it is called Abraham in supernal wholeness now you hint that he is not that righteous as it is written and Abraham stood up you cause the one who sits in the great throne to come down to sit in the small and lower throne fifty two but I reach a decision when I explain the verse and Abraham stood up from before his dead as Rabbi Bo said Rabbi Zirika said that the soul first protects the holy body from which it came when it is worthy of ascending to Eden and it ascends to its elevated place this is it. Meaning of and Abraham stood up from before his dead, namely the body 53 the phrase and spoke to the sons of Chet. Yeshua 572 refers to the rest of the bodies of the righteous who are frightened and beaten in the world for the fear of their possessor. They are afraid and in terror have chat for being dwellers of the dust. He asks why does the soul need the bodies of the righteous Rabbi Yehuda responded because they are all written down in the reckoning that is they are put into the accounts and are made to come out according to the reckoning at the resurrection of the dead. Thus the soul spoke with them so that the body would be numbered in their list. This is the meaning of and spoke to the sons of Chet. 54 What did the soul called Abraham say to them? It said in a conciliatory and respectful manner, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Bereshit 233 meaning this body will be counted with you in one quorum by this union. Rabbi said, Look at what is written and the children of Chet answered Abraham Yeshua 574 they also answered him in a respectful and conciliatory manner this is the meaning of hear us my lord you are a mighty prince among us section 10 Duma brings them into and out of reckoning the role of Duma angel in charge of graveyards is discussed the rabbis agree that he is in charge of all bodies good and wicked sorting them into graves according to merit until the day of reckoning Torah. Interpretation tells us that Abraham's body was granted a special treasure of peace and great rest also according to various rabbis those who have kept the law study Torah and performed acts of great piety may inherit either 200 or 400 worlds in the world to come the relevance of this passage a righteous person is not necessarily one who has attained the same level of spirituality and wisdom as the eminent sages of antiquity or the great Kabbalists cited in the Zohar we are not expected to reach their level but we are expected to at least strive for it therefore an individual who consistently endeavors toward high spiritual goals is defined as righteous more important than the level attained is the degree of change that we achieve through spiritual growth hence we need to awaken loftier aspirations and goals moreover we require inner strength and determination to pursue higher levels of righteousness these qualities take root within us as we meditatively study the section of Zohar 55 
the righteous and the pious and all the sincere proselytes killed for the sake of his name he will bring them out according to the reckoning the same as he put them into it this is the meaning of the verse that brings out their host by number not one is missing a shayah 4,0659 in the name of Rabbi Yaakov Rabbi Shmuel said that the souls of the evil are in the hands of the angel Duma who will send them to Gehenom to be sentenced once they are put in Duma's hands they do not return. Again before going to Gehenom this is what David feared when he committed that sin as it is written unless Hashem had been my help my soul had soon dwelt in Duma Tehillim 9417 Rabbi Yesus said the soul and reads him to put the body with the bodies of the other righteous and be enumerated in their numbers this is the meaning of and he spoke to Ephraim 60 Rabbi Tanjim added that the angel first addresses him look at what was written before the verse it is and Ephraim dwelt among the children. Of Chad Bershi 239 who were afraid of dwelling in the dust he hastens to instruct Duma to put that body in the reckoning of the righteous then the verse reads and Ephraim the kid answered Abraham in the ear of the children of Chad even of all that went in at the gate of the city saying of it who went in at the gate of the city Rabbi Nachman said those who were written in the list as Rabbi Nachman said and so is was decreed by the reckoning made by Duma they enter the cemeteries and by the reckoning he will take them out and he is in charge of the dwellers of dust 61 what is meant by the field I give you and the cave that is in it Bershi 510 Rabbi Yusi said that it is a treasure of peace and great rest Rabbi Shalom ben Menumi said there is not one righteous of those who are occupied in Torah who has not 200 bright worlds for the sake of Torah it is written and those that keep its fruit 200 sure Hashari made 112 for they renounce themselves daily as if they are killed to sanctify his name and his eternity whoever surrenders his soul to sanctify his name the scripture says it is as if he were killed daily for his sake as it is written but for your sake are we killed all the day long Tehillim 4423 Rabbi Nachman said that whoever surrenders his soul according to this verse inherits 400 worlds in the world to come Rabbi Yosef said we were taught that there are 200 according to Rabbi Nachman it is 200 for Torah and 200 for surrendering every day for the sake of the holiness of his name and of Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure section 11 and Sarah died in Kiryat Arba here the Zohar explores the ways in which people's lives determine the quality and nature of their death the rabbis also resume a discussion of Sarah's uniqueness among women now comparing her with Miriam whose age is not mentioned in scripture associated with water Miriam's death is emblematic of the ancient sins of it. Children of Israel, it is explained, owe their happiness and stability solely to the Torah, which is a gift of the Holy One intended to reveal the true nature and purpose of his creation. Rabbi Yehuda goes on to make an analogy between the effect of a weak king on his kingdom and that of an unrighteous man on his own life. The exploration finally circles back on itself with the assertion that death has no power over someone as pure as Sarah who died in the place where David was united with the patriarchs. The spiritual locale is the point at which the physical world joins with the spiritual. David represents our material realm known as Malchut, while the patriarchs signify the spiritual domain. Bridging these two worlds exemplifies the concept of perfection in this way. The righteousness of the individual soul, the righteousness of the ruler and his people, and the holiness of the land itself are shown to be one and the same. We learn that as long as a man's soul is nurtured by the light. Which is portrayed here as filtering through the seven lords Farah, both his life and his death will remain in harmony with the divine for a righteous existence alone spares us defilement by the angel of death. The relevance of this passage in practical terms, the upper world or the patriarchs refers to our soul and the desire to share our physical world of Malchut or David refers to our material body and the desire to receive for the self alone. Our ultimate objective in life is to balance and enjoin these two worlds, creating a new dynamic known in lay terms as the desire to receive for the sake of sharing. When we receive for the sake of imparting to others, we achieve perfect harmony with the sharing nature of the creator. This assures a life and an afterlife filled with light. Both the Torah and the Zohar serve to gradually sweeten the trait of receiving for the self into receiving for the purpose of sharing. Here the Zohar invokes the energy of Sarah to help achieve this effect. Strengthening our resolve whenever the temptation to satisfy our own desires arises 62 and Sarah died in Kiryat Arba Bershi 232 Rabbi Abba noted that of all the women in the world only for Sarah are the number of her days and years and the time of her life in the world mentioned as well as the place in which she was buried this shows that there was no other woman in the world like Sarah 63 if you say that it is written of Miriam and Miriam died there and was buried there Bimidbar 201 as it is written of Sarah note that this was written only to show that Israel sinned as said in the next verse and there was no water for the congregation and they gathered themselves together but to Israel had no water there without Miriam and her days and years were not specified when describing her death as was done for Sarah 64 Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying happy are you a land that your king is a man of freedom and your princes eat in due season Kahila 1017 this verse was explained by the friends nevertheless we have studied that the children of Israel are happy because the Holy One blessed be he gave them Torah with which to know the hidden ways and reveal the supreme mystery 65 happy are you a land refers to the land of the living namely the Nukba which clothes the living Elohim I am a because her king Zeir and been prepared for her all the blessings he had received from the supernal fathers the supernal Abba and I am a that king is the secret of it letter Bob which is always in readiness to pour blessing over her he is called the man of freedom the son of the oval jubilee which is by the name Israel Saba and Tevuna the Mokin who liberates slaves and gives them freedom the Mokin of the illumination of Chakma he is also a son of the supernal world the supernal Abba and I am a who gives generously from their everlasting union all life and illumination the oil of greatness and honor thus it is written Israel is my son my firstborn Shema. 422 Therefore happy are you a land 66 the verse woe to you a land when your king is a child Kahilat 1016 is explained as follows this is the netherland and the nether world draws nourishment from the uncircumcised foreskin alone all is drawn down only from the king called child namely Monotron as was explained woe to the world that must nourish this way 67 come and behold this child Monotron who has nothing of himself but the blessings he receives from the Nukba at appointed times each time these blessings are withheld when the moon Nukba is rendered defective and becomes dark woe to the world that depends on him for survival moreover the world suffers many judgments before it draws nourishment from him namely from the Klippah for all is established and maintained through judgments as has been explained 68 the verse and Sarah died also contains a secret which is that she did not die by the tortuous serpent namely the angel of death it had no power over her as it has over the people of the world as a result of Adam's sin. All the people in the world die by the serpent except Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam who died by a kiss as is written upon the mouth of Hashem. Bimidbar 3338 in honor of the Shechanah it is not mentioned of Miriam upon the mouth of Hashem although she too died by a kiss. 69 yet of Sarah it is written and Sarah died in Kiryat Arba because she died in and by the hands of Kiryat Arba and not by the serpent she died by the hands of Kiryat Arba that is Chevron where David was united with the patriarchs therefore she died not by another but in Kiryat Arba 70 come and behold when man's days are maintained by the supernal grades namely the seven lords Farah Chisid Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazid and Malchut man thrives in the world if he is not sustained by the supernal grades meaning he has lived 70 years drawn from the seven lords Farah Chisid Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadyazid and Malchut his days come out of the Sphirot and beneath the Sphirot until they approach the level where death dwells namely the angel of death underneath Malchut of which it is said sin crouches at the door Bershi 47 then the angel of death receives permission to take out the man's soul he flies through the world in one flight takes the soul and defiles the body which remains defiled happy are the righteous who were not defiled by him for no defilement remained in their body section 12 the serpent of the firmament the stars of the Milky Way called here the serpent of the firmament perform a special function in the lives of men assisting both those who wish to be purified and those who wish to defile themselves Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yossi discuss the evil man Bilam the sorcerer from their discussion we learn that the primordial serpent is the source of all enchantment and magic it is in s
In groups that is they are gathered and stand in it like countless mountains they are in charge of the secret deeds of the inhabitants of the world. 72 Similarly there are bunches of lights of Klippot that come into the world from the supernal primordial serpent that seduced Adam they are appointed to learn the secret deeds of the world. Therefore when a man wishes to be purified he receives help from above and the help of his master in circles and protects him he is then called holy. 73 If a man wishes to be defiled several groups of lights of Klippot are waiting for him they all hover about and around him they defile him so he is called unholy they go before him and proclaim unholy unholy as it is written and shall cry unclean unclean they I cry 1745 they are all connected to the primordial serpent and are hidden in the deeds of the people of the world. 74 Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yussi were walking from Tiberias to Lod. Rabbi Yitzhak said I wonder about the evil man. Bilam all he did was from the side of defilement here we learn a secret which is that all kinds of sorcery and witchcraft of the world are connected and derived from the primordial serpent which is the impure spirit of defilement therefore all enchantment have is named after the primordial serpent have they all derive from that side and anyone who is drawn to that magic is defiled 75 moreover one should be impure to cast a spell one has to draw upon oneself that side of the unholy spirit as man is aroused from below he draws upon himself from above if he is aroused below on the side of holiness he draws upon himself the supernal holiness and is sanctified if he is aroused below on the side of defilement he draws upon himself the spirit of defilement and becomes unholy upon this they said that whoever wishes to be defiled is defiled 76 for that purpose the wicked Bilam defiled himself nightly by mating with his ass in order to draw upon himself the Unholy spirit from the supernal serpent thereby drawing on himself the spirit of unholiness then he cast his spells and enchantment 77 first he took one of the serpents tied it in front of him split his head and removed its tongue then he took certain herbs and burned them to incense he took the serpent's head cut it into four pieces and made from it another incense offering 78 he drew a circle around himself uttered words and performed other deeds until he drew to himself the spirits of defilement who told him what he needed to know he acted according to their information which they knew from the side of that serpent in the firmament 79 this is how he acquired his knowledge enchantments and spells for that reason it is written he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments even bar 241 which alludes to real snakes as has already been explained the essence and origin of defilement begins with the serpent section 13 all Kinds of witchcraft and sorcery abide only in women when the serpent came upon Eve and injected impurities into her for this reason women are more susceptible to the allure of magic and witchcraft than men. Rabbi Yossi asks why this is so since the children of Israel were cleansed of impurities at Mount Sinai. Rabbi Yitzhak replies that the Torah was only given to males. Furthermore since women are of the left side it is more difficult for them to cleanse themselves of defilement. Various kinds of impurity are discussed and we learn that anything attached to the world as our unholy spirits holds the potential to defile the relevance of this passage. The term woman is used as a metaphor for man's evil inclination. Kabbalistically women are on a much higher level of spirituality as evidenced by their great intuition and heightened sensitivity. Therefore only the male is required to work at eradicating his evil inclination through Torah when a woman however uses her natural gifts for Negative purposes it is referred to as witchcraft a reading of the section helps men and women subjugate their negative desires 80 Rabbi Yossi asked why all kinds of witchcraft and sorcery abide only in women he said that when the serpent came upon Shabbat he injected impurities only into her and not into her husband because witchcraft radiates from the pollution of the serpent witchcraft is therefore in women he said assuredly this is so Rabbi Yossi kissed Rabbi Yitzhak and said many times have I asked upon this matter but never deserved to understand it until now 81 he asked where did Bilam learn everything that he did namely all his sorcery and all that he knew he answers he learned it from his father but in the mountains of the east Bimid bar 237 in the land of the east he learned most of the enchantments and kinds of magic for in these mountains abide the angels Asa and Azel whom the holy one blessed be he caused to fall from heaven because they denounced it creation of man they are tied in chains of iron there and reveal spells to men this is where Bilam gained knowledge as it is written Balak the king of Moab has led me from Aram out of the mountains of the east of it where Azah and Azal are 82 he said it is written he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments but he set his face toward the wilderness Bimid bar 241 which means that he did not always look for enchantments also snakes Rabbi Yitzhak said at the lower side which comes from the unholy spirit above is the unholy spirit that ruled over the wilderness at the time when the children of Israel defiled themselves by committing the sin of the golden calf therefore he set his face toward the wilderness he cast his spells to all directions in order to uproot the children of Israel but could not do so 83 Rabbi Yossi said when you earlier explained why witchcraft abides in women you said that the serpent came upon Shabbat and injected impurity into her this is well but we have learned that when Israel stood by Mount Sinai and received Torah their impurities were cleansed but the heathens who did not receive Torah remained impure so impurity is already gone from women therefore my question is still unanswered why is witchcraft mostly in women 84 he said to him you spoke well nevertheless come and behold Torah was given to males only as it is written and this is the Torah which Moshe set before the children let sons of Israel devour him. 444 as women were exempt from the commandments of Torah namely from the commandments valid at a fixed time therefore they remained impure at the giving of Torah for that reason witchcraft which derives from the impurity of the serpent abides mainly in women 85 moreover everyone became defiled again after the sin even the men it is more difficult for women to cleanse impurities from themselves than for men thus women practice sorcery and abide in defilement more so than men the reason why it is difficult for women to be cleansed from defilement is that women come from the left side and are attached to the strict judgment of the left the side cleaves to them more than to men because they come from strict judgment everything is attached to and follows its own kind 86 come and behold as I have said enchantment comes from the defilement of the serpent for Bilam used to defile himself first to draw upon him the unholy spirit then he practiced sorcery similarly it behooves men to stay away from a woman during menstruation lest he touch her because she is attached to the spirit of defilement if she practices sorcery at that time she will be more successful than at other times whatever she touches is therefore defiled and all the more so whomever approaches her happy are the children of Israel for the holy one blessed be he gave them Torah and told them also you shall not approach to a woman in the impurity of her menstrual flow to uncover her nakedness I am Hashem. Bay I cry 1819 to 2187 he asks why is it called sorcery if someone uses the chirping of birds to tell the future it is because the unholy spirit abides in that bird which is drawn from the side of defilement that unholy spirit foretells events every defiled spirit is attached to and comes to the world from the serpent and no one in this world is safe from it because it is everywhere until the time when the holy one blessed be he will remove it from the world as it is written he will destroy death forever Yeshua 258 and I will also cause the unclean spirit to pass out of the land Zechariah 132 section 14 the cave of Makbala part 1 Rabbi Yehuda tells us how it was that Abraham recognized the significance of the cave of Makbala and that he deserved to be buried there we learn that an ordinary man sees Adam at the moment of death yet Abraham saw him along with the vision of the garden of Eden and still lived this was because Abraham had been in Eden during his own lifetime and thus looked upon something he was already merited to see when he was alive he acquires the cave through spiritual wisdom not through any form of self-centered desire the relevance of this passage are egocentric desires compel us to covet possessions that provide temporary satisfaction but there is a downside chaos and darkness appear when the thrill has ended the soul however is in search of permanent fulfillment and people who achieve that fulfillment are willing and able to forsake short-term ego-based pleasures Abraham exemplifies this principle in the story of the cave of Makbala by remaining true to a spiritual path Abraham sought out the cave through his wisdom not his ego and therefore merited the greatest possible fulfillment the light of the garden of Eden the mystical words of the Zohar allow us to glimpse shards of light gleaming in the garden during our lives this light helps us to fulfill the needs of our soul instead of Foolishly catering to our ego 88 Rabbi Yehuda said Abraham recognized a
Abraham behaved wisely when he asked for a grave for Sarah for he did not ask for the cave immediately or say that he wanted to be separated from him instead he said give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Ershi 233 he did not mention either Ephron or the cave if you say that Ephron was not there it is not so indeed he was present as it is written and Ephron dwelt among the children of Shadabid 9 nevertheless Abraham said nothing to him. For the time being 91 he spoke with them further as it is written and spoke to the sons of Shadabid 3 could you conceive that Abraham wanted to be buried among the defiled or that he wanted to join them when he said give me a possession of a burying place with you but he behaved wisely 92 and we learn proper conduct from the way Abraham acted because he desired and wished for that cave although Ephron was there he did not want to ask him immediately he did not ask for the cave but Rather for what he did not want and asked another not Ephron as he said to the sons of Chet, Give me a possession of a burying place with you. 93 Once the sons of Chet said to him in the presence of Ephron, Hear us, my lord, you are a mighty prince among us. Bear she 235 It is written, and Ephron dwelt dwells among the children of Chet, dwells is written without vowels and can be conjugated as dwelt, which would mean that Ephron was already there as they started talking. And Abraham said, Hear me and entreat for me to Ephron the son of Tokar that he may give me the cave of Machpelah which he has evaded. If you say that since my honor is greater than yours, I ask for the cave of the Machpelah from Ephron because I do not want to dwell among you. This is not true, but with you and amongst you, Abitan, in other words, to be interred among you. This is what I meant because I want you so that I shall not be separated from you. Section 15 4. Hundred shekels the secret of what becomes of the body and soul at death is explored by Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda and Rabbi Shia when soul and body are parted the angel Duma becomes custodian of the body which must show its worthiness to receive the reward of four hundred worlds according to the rabbis this worthiness takes the form of a deep longing for purity and righteousness desiring those qualities makes us worthy those who did not feel this yearning will not be resurrected on the day of reckoning. The relevance of this passage the Kabbalists have long taught that the light of the creator reveals itself only to genuine seekers of the truth through our desire for righteousness we earn the light and become active participants in the process of creation many people turn to the creator only when tragedy or hardship strikes longing for the light is easily kindled during moments of adversity but when times are good we tend to forget our spiritual aspirations and as desire for the light ceases. Periods of prosperity inevitably come to an end. This passage sustains and increases our yearning for the light so that it illuminates our lives without end. Tisiphtah, end of 94. Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi Yehuda, visited Rabbi Shia and asked, Sir, have you heard how those who are versed in the mission explain this portion of the scripture as concerning the subject of the soul? Abraham being the soul and Sarah the body, he said, Happy is the fate of the righteous in the world to come for Torah. In their hearts is like a great stream, although they block it, the water breaks through and creates smaller streams in all directions. 95. Come and listen, Rabbi Yossi, you are beloved. I will tell you about this portion of the scripture in the reckoning of the righteous tomb and never enters a man's body after his demise until the soul shows him a letter as a sign that the cherubs gave it in the Garden of Eden. Rabbi Yossi said, I heard that when the soul enters the Garden of Eden, it ascends to its Place to Bina and does not descend to Malchut, but before the soul ascends, Tuma makes it a custodian of the body. The soul then shows Tuma that the body is worthy to receive 400 worlds as a reward. 96 Rabbi Shia argued, yet Rabbi Lazar said that Tuma knows that the body is worthy of the 400 worlds as its reward before the body shows him because it is announced in the Garden of Eden. But I have heard that when the soul is given the letter as a token, it returns to the body to enter it in. The reckoning of the righteous at the hands of Tuma it is written, but if you will give it, I pray you hear me, I will give you the price of the field. Take it of me. Bershi 2312. The price had Kezif of the field is the longing had Kisa and desire for the 400 worlds given as an heirloom for the body. 97 When he heard this explained by the heads of the Yeshiva Rabbi Yosef said, Whoever is made of dust may merit all this, namely the 400 bright worlds who shall merit it, who shall stand it is. Written who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem or who shall stand in his holy place. Tehillim 243 98 Rabbi Abba said come and behold it is written and Abraham here can to Ephron and Abraham wait to Ephron the silver this is the longing for those desirable worlds the 400 shekels of silver are the 400 worlds of pleasure and desire as Rabbi Nachman said current money with the merchant means that one may pass all the gates of heaven and Jerusalem the terrestrial with it without being detained 99 come and behold it is written and after this Abraham buried Sarah his wife Bershi 1819 this refers to the body which was numbered in the company of the other righteous by a note of the chieftain Duma Rabbi Yitzhak said so I have learned that all the bodies registered and visited by Duma will be resurrected when the Holy One blessed be he revives the dwellers of dust woe to the wicked who are not registered by him in writing for they will be lost in Gehenna forever. Of this it is said, and at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone who shall be found written in the book. Daniel 121, end of Tisiphet, end of section 16, the cave of Machpelah, part 2, a discussion of the events surrounding Avraham's purchase of the Machpelah cave ensues. We learn that Avraham managed to purchase both the cave and the field it stood in for a reasonable price because he neither outwardly displayed nor inwardly harbored a desire to own. Either one he knew that they were his by right by virtue of his spiritual effort, and this is something very different from a selfish desire for ownership. Indeed, it is Avraham's spiritual elevation that causes the property to seem like a burden to Ephraim, its original owner, Rabbi Shimon, then recounts what transpired between Adam and Avraham in the cave. Adam at first believes that his original humiliation and sin will be compounded in comparison with Avraham's righteousness, but a remarkable truth. Is now brought to light when Abraham agrees to pray for Adam. Both Adam and Eve are said to have lived for Abraham's sake, for he was the first man to become aware and cognizant of the Creator. This startling fact concerning Abraham's connection to Adam and Eve is further illuminated when Abraham restores Eve for whose sin he has not prayed to Adam's side. An event paralleled by the burial of Sarah after questions from Rabbi Shimon's son Rabbi Lazar. We are then taken deep into the secret of the difference between the field of Machpelah and the cave. This difference exists ultimately to show that the Holy One's actions in this world are simply intended to bring the light and sweetness of the upper realms. The differences between the cave and the field is a code referring to the different frequencies of spiritual light that are present in the physical realm, like the colors of the spectrum. The relevance of this passage, this section helps explain how right conduct and resistance to our Avaricious impulses allow us to receive the infinite delight waiting to pour down from the heavenly realm. In turn, we draw the strength to triumph over these self seeking wombs. 100 Rabbi Lazar asks, How did Abraham enter the cave? Why did he enter? He responded, He was running after a calf about which it is written, and Abraham ran to the herd. Bear sheet 187. This calf ran to the cave. Abraham ran after it and saw what he saw. 101. Another reason was that Abraham prayed every day he came out to the field that was fragrant with heavenly perfume. Saw light coming out of the cave and entered there to pray there. The Holy One blessed be. He spoke with him as a result. Abraham wanted the cave and always harbored a desire for it. 102. You may ask, Why did he not seek to buy it until then? He says, Because he had no need for it. He was afraid that they would check it, understand his wish and the importance of the cave, and then ask for more money or they could refuse to sell it altogether now that. He needed it the time had come to ask for it 103 come and behold if Ephron had seen in the cave what Abraham saw he would never have sold it but because Ephron saw nothing in it as nothing is revealed except to its owner it was revealed to Abraham only and not to Ephron it was revealed to Abraham because it was his and not Ephron's for Ephron had no share in it therefore Ephron saw nothing of the cave he saw only darkness and therefore he sold it 104 moreover he also sold him what Abraham did not ask him to sell because Abraham said only that he may give me the cave of the Machpelah for the full price he shall give it me bear she 238 and did not mention the field and Ephron said the field I give you and the cave that is in it I give it you if it ten for Ephron knew not what it was and found it all loathsome even the field in which the
One blessed be he because of the sin that we committed, but now we will further be put to shame because of your good deeds. One hundred and nine. Abraham said, I am ready to pray for you before the Holy One. Blessed be he, so you shall never be disgraced before him, namely, so he will forgive you completely for your sin. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife. Bereshit 1819. What is the meaning of and after this? It means after Abraham undertook to pray for Adam. One hundred and ten. Adam returned to his place, but Chabad did not as she had made Adam sin, as it is written, the woman whom you did give to be with me. Bereshit 312. She was afraid that Adam would not receive her. Then Abraham approached and put her with Adam, who received her for Abraham's sake. This is the meaning of and after this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife. The particle et before Sarah is meant to add Chabad, whom Abraham returned to the grave, as was said. Then Adam and Chabad were properly settled in their places, as it is written, these. Are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created had Behi Baram Bereshit 24 we learn that Behi Baram has the same letters as Abraham lived by Abraham which indicates that they were created for him the generations of the heaven and the earth are Adam and Shabbat it is not written the heaven and the earth but the generations of the heaven and of the earth which refers to Adam and Shabbat who were not begotten by man of these the verse says they lived for the sake of Abraham how do we know that they existed for Abraham because it is written and the field and the cave that is in it were made over also maintained to Abraham until Abraham came Adam and Shabbat did not exist in the world the field and the cave in it allude to Adam and Shabbat who dwelt there the words by Abraham mean for Abraham it is shown that Adam and Shabbat were sustained for Abraham's sake 111 Rabbi Lazar asks Rabbi Shimon his father if the cave is really the Machpelah for Although it is written the cave of Machpelah, Bereshit 238, it is later written the cave of the field of Machpelah, Ibid 19. Thus the field is called Machpelah and not the cave 112. Rabbi Shimon replied that indeed it is called the cave of Machpelah, as it is written that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, Bereshit 238, but neither the cave nor the field along is Machpelah, it refers instead to the field with the cave together. They are called Machpelah, only the field is of Machpelah, not the cave, which means that only the field bears the name of the Machpelah, not the cave, because the cave is in the field and the field is in something else, as will be discussed presently. 113. Come and behold, the whole land of Israel is enfolded beneath Jerusalem, which is the secret of Malchut, it is above and below in the following manner. There I ask the upper Jerusalem, which is Bud, and there is the lower Jerusalem, which is Malchut, for it is held above and held below the upper Jerusalem is. Held on two sides above and below, and therefore it is doubled. One fourteen. Thus the field is of that Machpelah lit double, which is Malchut, for it dwells there, as it is written. See, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed. Bereshit two thousand seven hundred and twenty-seven, which is Malchut, because it is double above and below. It is written, the field of Machpelah, and not a double field, because this would allude to the double Malchut called field one hundred and fifteen. Moreover, the secret of the matter relates to the field of Machpelah. What is the Machpelah double? It is the hay of the holy name, which is double, for there are two H E I S in the name Y U T H A B A P A, and both are as one. For that reason, the scriptures say vaguely the equals hay Machpelah, for this is the only double letter in the holy name, and the word the Machpelah with the hay alludes to the double hay, namely the lower hay of the name Y U T H A B A P A, which is the secret of Malchut sweetened by the first hay of Y U T H A B A P A one hundred and sixteen. Although the cave was indeed double a cave within a cave, it is called the cave of the field of Machpelah for a different reason. As we said after the sweetening of Malchut by Bina Abraham knew that, and when he spoke to the sons of Chet, he concealed it by saying that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which was called by that name because it was double. He did not say the field of Machpelah called after the sweetening by Bina in Torah, though it is called the cave of the field of Machpelah. As it ought to be called for the sweetening of Malchut by Bina was only over the field and not in the cave. One hundred and seventeen, the Holy One, blessed be He, does everything. So whatever is in this world, Malchut will resemble what there in above and Bina. As a result, they are connected, and His glory is established above and below. Happy is the portions of the righteous that the Holy One, blessed be He, desires them in this world and in the world to come. Section seventeen, and Abraham was. Old advanced in age using Abraham and David as examples Rabbi Yehuda explains the difference between the righteousness and contrition while the soul of a contrite person immediately enters the supernal realm where it cleaves to the Holy One merely righteous souls may take many years to acquire such a blessing even Abraham and David were unable to enter the world where the truly contrite are made welcome Rabbi Yossi further adds that a contrite soul is closer to the Creator than all others drawing down more life from above in proportion to its yearning and penitence the relevance of this passage the Zohar values a spiritual state of mind far above religious dogmatic one some people observe the law but at the expense of hurting those around them righteousness turns to self-righteousness and negative action all in the name of God uninterrupted humbleness and repentance for our misdeeds protects us from this faith this passage helps us raise our consciousness so we can Differentiate our desire for righteousness from our need for penitence. Concentrating on penitence hastens us into the light rather than merely flattering our egotistical pride. 118 And Abraham was old, advanced in age, lit coming with the days, and Hashem blessed Abraham in all things. Bereshit 241 Rabbi Yehuda opened with the verse Happy is the man you choose and cause to approach to you that he may dwell in your courts. Tehillim 655 This verse has already been explained. Nevertheless, happy is the man whose ways are acceptable to the Holy One. Blessed be he who wants to bring himself nearer to him. 119 Come and behold, Abraham came closer to the Holy One. Blessed be he all his days. His desire was to come closer to him. Abraham did not come closer through one day or at one time, but his good deeds brought him closer every day as he moved from one grade to another until his grade was elevated. 120 When he was old, he entered the supernal grades as he deserved, as it is written. And Abraham was old and then coming with the days. This refers to the supernal days, the days known by the secret of the faith. And Hashem blessed Abraham in all, namely by Yizid of the supernal Abba. And I am a called all where blessings and every goodness come from as its plenty never stops flowing. 121 Happy are the penitent who in one hour, one day, one moment get as close to the Holy One. Blessed be he as most righteous come to the Holy One. Blessed be he over several years. Abraham did not come into the supernal days until he was old as has been explained. Neither did David as it is written. Now King David was old, advanced in years, lit coming with the days. I may 11, but a penitent comes right in and cleaves to the Holy One. Blessed be he. 122 Rabbi Yossi said, We learned that the Holy Righteous have no permission to be in that place where the contrite stand. They are closer to the king than everyone else and draw plenty from above with a more intent heart and greater force in. Order to come closer to the king section 18 there are many places for the righteous the relationship of a man's good deeds to the place allotted to him in the world to come is expounded by the rabbis we learn that there are ultimately as many different places in upper world as there are varieties of good deeds in this one just as the wicked receive a judgment each night while they are asleep so the righteous nightly receive a blessing as their souls ascend to carve out their future path to the supernal realms the righteous souls also enjoy a dialogue with the angels and saints who in exchange for information from the lower world can for gifts of wisdom it was such wisdom says rabbi Shia that enabled abraham to understand locate and avoid the sources from which unholy spirits bring defilement and negativity to the unwary and unrighteous in this world the relevance of this passage in simplest terms reality includes two basic realms the other world and our existence in the physical dimension the upper world is the source of our intuition and the force behind moments of mystical insight when a dream comes true for example contact has been made with the upper worlds when instinct impelled you to make an illogical decision that brought good fortune this is another form of connection to the upper world unfortunately these acute moments of insight and clarity are rare we seem to have no control over how or when we make contact with the supernal realms when we must make decisions and choices based on the evidence of our physical existence the result is often turmoil and turbulence the author of the zohar understood this difficulty and prescribed this portion as a remedy a reading of this passage helps us utilize our sleep as a tool for spiritual enlightenment the energy of abraham is summoned
Never defiled 126. Similarly, whoever is defiled in this world draws the spirit of unholiness to himself. When his soul leaves him, he is defiled by the other side, and his dwelling is with the unclean with the fiends of the world. As a man draws upon himself in this world, his dwelling will likewise be determined in the eternal world. The defiled spirits defile him and bring him into Gehenna. 127. Come and behold, whoever sanctifies himself and is on guard against defilement in this world will find his dwelling in the next world among the celestial holy beings who eternally carry forth the missions of the Holy One. Blessed be he, they stand by in the court as it is written, the court of the tabernacle. Shema 279. Upon which the scriptures further state, Happy is he that he may dwell in your courts. 128. Others are in a more inner place, not in the court, but in the house. As it is written, we will be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Tehillim 655. David said, We will be. Satisfied with the goodness of your house, he asks if he said that he may dwell in your courts. Why is it written, We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house? Should it not have been written, He will be satisfied as he may dwell. But we learned that sitting in the temple court is solely for the kings of the house of David. Therefore, he said, as speaking for himself, We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, meaning himself and the other kings who have a place in the temple court in the secret of the house, namely the temple 129. There is a place for the most pious who receive even more inward to the aspect of the temple. Who are they? They are those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, before the tent of meeting eastward shall be Moshe and Aaron and his sons. Bemidbar 338 of them it is written, Your holy temple, Tehillim 655. Many compartments upon compartments, lights upon lights exist in that world, each different from the other, each feeling. Ashamed by its fellows' life, or as good deeds are different from each other in this world, so the places for the compartments and their lights are different in that world. 130 Come and behold, we have learned that even in this world, when man is asleep in his bed and the soul comes out of his body to hover about the world, not every soul rises to see the glory of the face of Adikim in his soul ascends as he generally draws upon himself, and according to his deeds, 131 when a defiled person sleeps, his soul leaves, and the spirits of defilement sees it. It is attached to the lower grades that hover about the world and tell it things that will happen in the world in the future, things they heard behind the curtain, and sometimes they tell it false things and laugh at it, as has already been explained. 132 If the man has merit, then his soul ascends when he sleeps, it goes around and paves away among the spirits of defilement. All say, make way, make way, this one is not of our. Side and it ascends among the saints who tell accurate information to it. 133 And when the soul descends again, the mixed legions of angels in whom holiness is mingled with defilement want to approach the soul in order to learn the information it received in return. They tell it other things, but what it learned from holy beings compares to what it learned from the mixed legions as grain compares with straw and chaff. This is the most meritorious reward while one is still among the living. That is while the soul is still in this world. 134 Similarly, when souls in this world leave their bodies, i.e., after they die, they wish to ascend by passing through gates at which one finds harmful hordes that seize the souls of their own side and deliver them into the hands of Duma so that he may take them to Gehenna. 135 Later, as they ascend from Gehenna, the demons grab the souls and proclaim these transgress the precepts of their master, then they travel throughout the world bringing these. Souls back to Gehenna, thus they repeatedly take the souls out of Gehenna, make their proclamations, and again return them to Gehenna for twelve months. After twelve months of peace, they are quieted and rise to the place that they deserve. Meritorious souls ascend and receive their places, as has already been explained. 136 Come and behold, happy are the righteous, for much goodness is put aside for them in that world. The innermost place is reserved for the righteous, those who know the secret of their master and cleave to him every day of these. It is written, Neither has the eye seen that an Elohim beside you should do such a thing for him that waits for him. Yeshayah 643 137 He asks what is meant by for him that waits for him. He replied that it is similar to the verse waited to speak to Eophio 324. This refers to those who are anxious to fully understand some words of wisdom, thereby better understanding their master, and then the master takes pride daily to enter the other. Gates and come among the supernal saints without meeting any obstacles. Happy is their portion in this world and the world to come. 138 Come and behold, Abraham thus entered to properly know and cleave to his master. First he performed good deeds to merit the supernal days and was therefore blessed by the place from where all the blessings derive as it is written. And Hashem had blessed Abraham in all. Bear she 421. What is the meaning of in all? It means the dwelling place of the river in which water never stops flowing, namely Yizid of the supernal Abba and Ima, whose union is eternal. 139 Rabbi Shia said, Come and behold that Abraham did not want to mix with the women of the world and cling to the heathen nations because the wives of the heathen nations defiled their husbands and those attached to them because Abraham had the knowledge of wisdom. He knew the essence and root of the place from which the unholy spirits come out to hover in the world. Therefore he made his servant. Swear not to take a wife for his son from among the other nations. Section 19 Eden drips upon the garden. The rabbis display their profound and comprehensive knowledge of the scriptures and writings in a complex discussion of an image in Yeshua's Behold one will upon the earth while replete with the arcane wisdom of Gematria, and numerology and Kabbalah and the profound mystical beauty of Solomon's great song. This debate has a surprisingly straightforward resolution. One that echoes previous sections of the Zohar in its emphasis on the importance of a pure heart and good deeds in this world for bringing mercy and peace in the next rabbi. Its concludes with a simple exposition of the reason for mentions of Abraham's age. Abraham literally came into the days his soul had reached its highlighted place where its great longevity was assured. The relevance of this passage the Talmud reveals the difference between man and beast, a wild animal. According to Talmudic sages instinctively knows to flee the raging fire man's nature on the other hand compels him to jump headfirst into the fiery blaze our natural tendency is to invite chaos and mayhem into our lives we complicate and intellectualize life and its challenges and we rationalize our responses to them we refuse to heed the simple principles that create happiness good deeds and persistent spiritual development in reading this passage we clear away the barriers to knowledge and recognize that even the most complex mysteries arise from the same simple and eternal issues indeed complexity itself is merely another excuse to avoid the quest to draw down light this excuse must be overcome like any other midrash anilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 140 and Abraham was old advanced in age bear she 241 we learned in the mission rabbi laser said in any case this mission well explains the verse behold one open will upon the earth by the living Creatures with its four faces, Yashiska 115, it becomes a Neshama. I said in the earlier mission of this, although OFAN will is always a name of the Nefesh, the mission states that the OFAN in this verse became a Neshama. Again, there is no question about this fact, and the explanation is accurate, but the mission does not explain why 141 Rabbi Abba responded, Tell us, sir, about this mission. What is it? He replied, The hidden meaning of the verse, Behold, one will upon the earth, is explained in it. Mission is that the OFAN becomes a Neshama. This was also explained in another section, the one about the 13 divine attributes of mercy, but here we have to explain this portion. He began with the verse, My dog, my undefiled is but one, she is the only one of her mother, Sher Hashirim 69, for this verse alludes to the Neshama. Rabbi Lazar asked, Why do we refer to it here in Sher Hashirim as a female, namely my dog, but one, but in the Torah we refer to it as male, namely Abraham 142. Rabbi Lazar said in Torah the soul is male in relation to the body because the body to the soul is like a woman to a man in relation to a higher grade the soul is as a female to a male each receives its grade according to the context therefore in the Song of Songs when the king that pieces his talks of the soul being of a higher grade it is therefore considered as a female and called my dog my undefiled but in Torah the soul is in itself and is therefore referred to as a male namely. Abraham 143 it was taught in the mission that four times an hour every day Eden drips upon the garden the result of these drops is a river which separates into four branches each day 48 drops fall on the 70 trees in the garden as it is written the trees of Hashem have their fill Tehillim 10415 Rabbi Tanshim said it is written he waters the hills from his upper chambers if it 13 what is his upper chamber it is Eden and where is Eden Rabbi Yehuda said it is
The name of the first is Pishan. Pershi 211. Why is it written? The name of the first is Pishan. Pishan is different from the rest because it flows into the land of Egypt. Therefore, the wisdom of Egypt is greater than that of the rest of the world. 147. When it was decreed that the wisdom of Egypt was lost, the Holy One, blessed be he, took the drops and threw them across the garden into the river of the Garden of Eden, as it is written, and a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Pershi 210. And when the drops which remained in the garden were taken from Egypt, wisdom was gone from Egypt. It separated into four other rivers, of which the most special was Pishan. Wisdom was thus lost in Egypt when the drops were taken from Egypt and left in the garden. 148. Every prophet was sucking from that spirit that came out of Eden. This is the meaning of walking in the garden in the breeze of the day. Pershi 38. It is stored in the garden of Eden for the future. This is the river. That Yashiskal saw in his prophecy, therefore the scripture reads, For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem Yashiah 119, as this water always causes the knowledge in the world to increase. 149 The sages said that the souls of all the righteous are above in Eden, and wisdom is strengthened in the world because of what descends from Eden, how much more so for every one of those who stand in it and take their fill of its pleasure and brightness. 150 Rabbi Yitzhak said, If it soul deserves to pass through the gates of the terrestrial Jerusalem, the great angel Michael hastens to greet and walk with it. The ministering angels wonder about this and ask, Who is that coming up from the wilderness? Sir Hashirim 85, who rises to be among the high ones from a destroyed body which resembles a breath, as is written, Man is like a breath. Talim 1444, he answers by saying, My dove, my undefiled is but one, she is distinguished, she is the only one of her mother. Sir Hashirim 69. Her mother is the throne of glory, a mother for the soul that gives it birth, for the soul is derived from her 151. The daughters saw her and called her happy, but this refers to the other souls whose rank is high and who are called the daughters of Jerusalem. According to Rabbi Yussi, they are called the daughters of Jerusalem, while the other ones are called the daughters of Lot. The daughters saw her, the rest of the souls praise it and say to it, Come in peace, the queens and the concubines. Praise her, but the queens are the patriarchs that are queens, the concubines are the proselytes, they all praise and laud it until it enters above, and the soul is in its ascended place, and longevity is maintained as it is written, and Abraham was old, advanced in age, lit coming into the days, Bereshi 241, as he entered longevity in the world to come. Section 20 about the resurrection of the dead in this long and complex section, the rabbis first discussed it. Nature of souls at the time of the resurrection they then examine Torah verses concerning difficult questions on the amount of light souls will merit from the throne of the Holy One based upon the soul's deeds and the role of angels in the body's resurrection we then hear an account of Rabbi Elizar's visit to his Rabbi Yoshan and Ben Zakai on the day of the new moon they discuss the secret of ten, ten dimensions composing reality through which the primordial light functions in this world we learn that the light of the soul is greater than the light of angels the friends then continue their study of Torah uncovering hidden meanings and phrases concerning the relationship between soul and body in the story of Abraham the relevance of this passage the light derived from the letters and lessons of this portion hastens the coming of the resurrection in a merciful manner the resolve to perform good deeds is also kindled in our hearts enabling us to overcome the seductive lure of Physical impulse serve the true needs our souls and merit a share in the world to come. 152 Rabbi Abbasaba the elder stood up and said, May peace and tranquility come to you, Rabbi Shimon the son of Yakeh, for restoring the diadem to its former splendor. For we learned in the first mission that since the soul is perfected in the supernal place, it does not return to the body, it remains in the same condition, but other souls are created and come out of it. Then Rabbi Shimon the son of Yakeh taught that although this world is vanity and the body is a putrid drop of semen, yet the soul enters it in the future when everyone will be refined and the body will be more pure, sustained, and complete. There will be no reason for the soul to enter it with all its completeness. 153 Rabbi Acha said, The Holy One, blessed be, he will give the very soul and very body existence in the future, but both will be whole and have completeness of knowledge so they can achieve what they did not achieve in this. World 154 and Abraham was old advanced in age lit coming with the days Rabbi Bo said that according to Rabbi Yochanan this refers to the world of days namely light and not to that world which is night Rabbi Yaakov said coming with the days means that he came to those worlds called days because of all the pleasures and the brightness that he inherits Rabbi Yaakov is not differing from Rabbi Yochanan he is simply explaining the verse more fully and Hashem had blessed Abraham in all. Bereshi 241 refers to the office namely to the authority that the Holy One blessed be he gave him of his name which is the letter Hay by which the world was created 155 we learned that Rabbi Yochanan said Monitron the great minister is a boy a servant whose Rabbi his master rules him he is in charge of the soul and gives it daily of the light he was ordered to give it in the future he will receive an account in writing from the cemetery from Tuma for each body that he can show to his. Master, he will turn that backbone into yeast to build the body under the ground to mend and wholly revive the body as is proper for a body without a soul. Later, the Holy One, blessed be, he will send the soul to its place within the body. This will be after it comes to the land of Israel. 156 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is then written, and Abraham said to the eldest servant of his house that ruled. Bereshi 242. If we look at this from the aspect of wisdom, namely as it concerns the resurrection of the dead, what is the meaning of the words his servant? Because Abraham is the secret of the soul, and Abraham said to the servant refers to the servant of the soul. How do we know that there is a servant to the soul? Rabbi Nehemi responded, We need look only at the words his servant and not connect them to Abraham in the meaning of the verse. And the meaning I ask the servant of Hashem close to his worship, who is he, he is Matron, who will beatify the body in the grave, as we have said. 157. Thus the words and Abraham said to his eldest servant refer to Monotron the servant of Hashem the phrase the eldest servant of his house is the beginning of the creations of Hashem that ruled over all that he had means that the Holy One blessed be he gave him power over all his hosts namely over the upper angels 158 we learned that Rabbi Shimon quoted Rabbi Yossi who quoted Rab saying that all the hosts of the servant receive light and delight in the splendor of the soul as the light of the soul in the world to come is greater than the light of the throne namely the throne of glory and the angels receive their light from the throne so the light of the soul is greater than that of the throne a difficult point is then raised it seems that the soul was taken from the throne and the receiver is smaller than the giver of necessity the explanation is that each had according to what was appropriate for it Rab Nachman added that it is actually greater than the light of the throne as it is written, the likeness is the appearance of a man above upon it. Yashiskel 126 above it in splendor 159. When he goes to perform the errand of the Holy One, blessed be he, all his hosts and his chariot are nourished by that splendor of the soul. And the soul says to him, Puti our hand, dash, namely your escort, namely the hosts of Monotron, dash under my thigh, Bereshi 242. This is the light that flows from the soul. 160. Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Shalom, said that we have been taught that. When he goes on an errand for the Holy One, blessed be he, he moves his upper hosts by one letter of his name, namely by the letter Yud of the name Yud Hey hey is the secret of IMA and Abba, the root of the soul's light. Rabbi Yehuda said, Yerahim has the same numerical value as Ramlet High, which is what the soul says that is Puti our hand, your escort under the grade of the high and elevated that rules over all after the soul commanded the escort of high ones to be under him, I told. Him I make you swear a great oath 161 Rabbi Yitzhak said it is written Elohim of the heaven and Elohim of the earth Yashis 126 since he already mentioned Hashem namely I will make you swear by Hashem why at Elohim of the heaven and Elohim of the earth he asks Rabbi Yehuda who said that he moves all his hosts by one letter of his name when he goes Rabbi Yehuda said it is written Elohim of the heaven and Elohim of the earth to show that he is master over everything. Simultaneously in one instant he moves everything and everything is nothing compared to him this is why he mentions heaven and earth in the oath which is the secret of the letter Yud which indicates that this light governs all the grades and everything is as not compared to it Rabbi Yitzhak said that by two letters of his name he moves his whole host when
To my country and to my kindred, before 164, Rabbi Yussi said what is meant by the verse and take a wife to my son Itzhak. If this refers to the enclosing of the soul, should it not have said Abraham, Rabbi Itzhak replied, the very body that suffered with me in that world and had no pleasure or content for fear of its possessor, I as a reference to the loose bone which does not delight in eating and drinking in this world, this very body shall you take to laugh within that rejoicing of it. Righteous to take delight in it and the joy of the Holy One, blessed be he, have pleasure with it because it is time for laughter at the resurrection of the dead as it is written, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Tehillim 1262 165 Rabbi Yehuda the son of Rabbi Itzhak said, Come and listen, an angel does only one errand, not two at the same time. There are, however, two errands to perform to resurrect the body in the grave and to make it rise to the land of Israel where the soul will be. Enclosed in it, but one angel does not perform two errands. Rabbi Abba said, There is one angel with an inkstand at his waist. This is Gabriel. He will put a mark on the brow of each, meaning that he will mend the body afterward. The great minister Matatron will go and mend each one, preparing it to receive its soul. This is the meaning of the verse. He shall send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife. Verse 247 What is meant by before you it indicates that the Holy One, blessed be he, will send an angel to mend the body before your errand, and Matatron will bring the soul with which man is enclosed. As no one angel does two errands. 166 Rabbi Eliezer went to see his rabbi Rabbi Yoshan and Ben Zakai on the first day of the month when he arrived. He told him, Oh, well, for those who see filled with drawn water, yet gushing more from its own source, what does it seek here? 167 He answers, It behooves a man to greet his rabbi on the day of a new moon. He said to him, Not for that. Reason I said, what does it seek here? I see in your face that there is a new deep secret about which you are going to ask. Therefore I asked, what does someone as great as you want with me? 168 He responded, I see that primordial light that was in use at the time of the creation and was then stored for the righteous in the future travels by ten and conducts everything according to the secret of ten. We learned that there are ten writings, ten keys to the hospital in its hands. It takes these and ten notes in the garden of Eden to mend the earth for the bodies of the righteous. 169 He said, Eliezer, my son, you have seen more than a holy angel for the light of the soul is greater than the light of angels because Rabbi Eliezer explained the secret of the ten only by the upper three columns. Chakmabana and Dash Rabbi Yoshan and Ben Zakai is going to explain the secret of the ten also in the lower seven Sfarah. He says the world Malchut is created by ten and it is conducted by ten this. Is Yezid that leads Malchut called world the holy throne Netzach and Hot called the lower throne is according to ten the Torah the secret of Tiferet is by ten its traveling namely Bura is by ten the supernal worlds Jesus which is superior to the lower seven are by ten and there is the supernal one above them all blessed be he namely Keter from which everything is drawn both the light of Shesed alluded to in the secret of ten and the light of Chakma 170 I will tell you something. Else those verse in the Mishnah put some thought into it as it is written and the servant took ten camels Beersheet 4210 Rabbi Eliezer said to him Master I know this verse meaning you do not have to explain it to me but what is the meaning of for all the goods of him Master were in his hands of it I do not know how to explain it how could it be that he carried all the property of Abraham in his hands he replied this is the name of his master namely the Sheshana called name that went with him to bring him to the desirable place and to protect him so that nothing would happen to him. Rabbi Eliezer said, Assuredly, this is the secret of the verse, for my name was in him. Shema 2321 171 Rabbi Abayu said, Come and behold, he who knows his name perfectly knows that he and his name are one, the Holy One, blessed be he and his name, the Sheshanah are one, as it is written, Hashem shall be one, and his name one. Zechariah 149, that is the name, the Sheshanah, and he's Eir and Ben are one, 172. Rabbi Abba said, We should look at the verse, and he made his camels kneel down outside the city by well of water. Beersheet 2411, according to Rabbi Abba, outside the city means in the cemetery by well of water refers as we learned that those who are the first to be revived from the dead in the cemetery are those who dealt in Torah, as we have learned when a man comes into his grave, he is first asked if he set appointed times to study Torah, as it is written, and he shall be the faith of your. Times Yeshayah 336 without question he who responds yes is revived first 173 Rabbi Abba said that at the time of evening Bereshit 2411 refers to Friday Shabbat the time of the resurrection of the dead he asks what is the meaning of these things he responds we have learned that the world exists for 6,000 years and that Shabbat is the sixth millennium the ending of all thus at the time of evening means the time of ending for everything the phrase at the time that the women go out to draw water refers to the scholars of the Torah who draw the water of Torah the time to go out and shake off the dust namely the time to resurrect 174 Rabbi Abba added that there is more to know as we have learned that those occupied in knowing their master in this world and their soul to perfection in the world to come deserve to get out of the grave by the oath of the soul Matatron was made it swear for Matatron comes to know which is the soul's proper body as the soul made him swear. And it is written, Behold, I stand here by the well of water, Bereshi 2443. Although it is a body of the scholar of the Torah, Matatron goes to look for perfection as it is written, and it shall come to pass that the maid who comes forth to draw, and I say to her, Give me, I pray you, a little water from your pitcher, Ibid 44, which means, Tell me by hint the knowledge of the name from what you conceived, 175. And she says to me, Both drink you, Bereshi 2444. This means that she let him know. Three things, one, you are a servant like me, two, the knowledge of you does not compare with the knowledge of Hashem, blessed be he, and three, it behooves you to conceive that you are a creature like me, and although you are an angel, you are like a creature, namely, there is want in you as there is in me, 176. I will draw water for your camels also, Bereshi 2419 indicates that it also drew forth for his attendance from what it perceived the words your camels means, you're written you, in other words, my. Understanding is that when you're written you was not aware they are unable to conceive him too. I know that I have an advantage over you i.e. from the aspect of being included in a point in this world which is lacking in supernal angels and three I know how you were created from the radiance that was placed with you that is it also understood the secret of his creation if the body mentions all these perceptions let the sign that was printed on me be delivered to me if the body shall say these things and not. One shall be missing then I shall know she is a woman she is a body from the same soul according to the oath it made me swear 177 and it came to pass before he had done speaking Bereshit 2415 according to Rabbi Yitzhak Rabbi Yehuda said while he was thinking of how to try the body it is written behold Ripka came out which is the holy body that is occupied in Torah it pounds the body for knowledge of the conception of his possessor who was born to Bichuel, Ibn Rabbi Yehuda said. She was the daughter Hebbad of El, the son of Milka Ibid, who is a son to the king Hebmach of the universe, the wife of Nakar Abraham's brother, alludes to the company of the mind, the body attached to the mind, and is the brother of the soul, and the phrase with her picture upon her shoulder alludes to the weight of wisdom upon it. 178, and the servant ran to meet her. Bereshit 2417 refers to Matatron and said, Let me, I pray you, drink a little water of your pitcher, give me a hint of the wisdom of the knowledge of your maker that you dealt with in the world you left. Rabbi Abba said, We have explained that after that it is written, and I put the ring upon her nose and the bracelets upon her hands. Ibid 47, Rabbi Abba said that these are the bones that were scattered here, and there he puts them together and weighs them one upon the other, as is written, and strengthen your bones. Yeshayah 5811, 179, Rabbi Abba said, At that time the body stands in the land of Israel, where the Soul enters it, Rabbi Yoshan, and asks who conducts the body to the land of Israel. Rabbi Zira said, The Holy One, blessed be he, digs caverns under the ground, and they roll to the land of Israel. Hence it is written, and the earth shall cast out the shades of the dead. Yeshayah 2619, 180. Rabbi Yitzhak said, Gabriel conducts them to the land of Israel. How do we know that from the verse? Will you go with this man? Bereshit 2458. Elsewhere it is written, The man Gabriel, Daniel 921. Rabbi Yosi asked, Why is it written? And Rivka had a brother, and his name was Lavan. 29. R
Verse come with me from Lebanon, my bride with me from Lebanon. Sure, Hasherim 48. Rabbi Abayu said once the body was built and established, it is brought to the land of Israel to receive its soul. The soul awaits it there and comes out to greet it as is written, and its hawk went out to meditate in the field. Bereshit 2463. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride is the soul, and look from the top of manna. Ibid corresponds to, and he lifted his eyes and saw Ibid 184. Rabbi Yehuda said, If this is the soul of Abraham, is satisfactory as was said, what then is its hawk? Rabbi Abayu said, The friend said, It is now called its hawk because of the increased joy in the world. 185. Rabbi Abayu said, First the soul was called Abraham, and the body Sarah. Now the soul is called its hawk, and the body Rivka. Rabbi Shimon said, It was taught in the mission that the soul awaited the body in the land of Israel 40 years before the body existed, where at the temple 186. Rabbi Abayu said, Look at it. Verse and took Rivka and she became his wife and he loved her and its hawk was comforted after his mother's death. Bear she 2467 when he loves the body and is comforted by it it is time for laughter and delight in the world. 187 Rabbi Yehuda said now this whole portion of the scripture is made clear but I do not know the meaning of the verse. Then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Chara. Bear she 251 to a reasonable mind this text is contradictory it contradicts it. Explanation concerning the soul and body at the time of resurrection 188 Rabbi Demi arrived and said I have heard an explanation for this portion but I do not remember it. They said that the high and strong namely the upper grades did not present it for revelation what have we to say Rabbi Yehuda stood up and said that the portion is revealed in the yeshiva of our friends the sages of the mission 189 they stood up and began walking he Rabbi Yesa and Rabbi Shia they found Rabbi Lazer. Ben Rabbi Shimon who was revealing the secret of Tifilin they came before him and asked sir what are you engaged in he replied I am recounting the reason for the Tifilin for blessed is the man who dons Tifilin and knows the sense thereof 190 they said if it is well before you sir may you tell us something they said we learned from your father that the Holy One blessed be he in his great love for the children of Israel told them to build him a tabernacle reflecting the supernal high chariot. So he might come and dwell among them this is the meaning of and let them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. Shema 258 we learned from your father that the reason for the Tifilin was hidden in this verse 191 he said to them come and behold the temple was made to reflect the upper one in the shapes of its holy chariots and then the Holy One blessed be he caused his Chechen to dwell among them in this manner those versed in the mission discussed the reason for the Tifilin. Any man who wears Tifilin will be patterned after the upper chariots, the lower chariot, and the upper chariot, so that his kingdom will come and the Sheshanah will dwell upon him. 192 We learned that there are deep secrets in the Tifilin and its patterns. There are three chariots within them, like the high and holy ones, reflecting the secrets of the three letters of his holy name, Yud For these three chariots are the three letters, Yud The four sections govern the four letters of his holy name. This is therefore the secret of the Shin of three crowns and Shin of four crowns, which means the three kings ruling over the body corresponding to the Shin with three heads and the Tifilin upon the holy one. Blessed be he above the head Tifilin and the hand Tifilin amounting to four sections, which correspond to the Shin with four heads. 193 Similarly, the heart rises as if on the lower chariot, the secret of the Mukba and the lower one, the is mounted. We have also learned that. This chariot of the arm the nukba is below namely the secret of the hand tifilin called the arm the heart rides as if beneath it was given to it to bring in all the heavenly hosts so the heart rides down below and all the limbs of the body are given to it 194 above the heart are the four sections of the brain the holy one blessed be he is supreme ruler over them he is king of all and the secret of wisdom resembles the temple as it is written and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end shema 2519 above them is the king's chechenah within the four letters yudhe bab hey yudhe is on the right cherub and bab hey on the left cherub within the two chariots the upper chariot is on the right cherub and the lower chariot is on the left cherub 195 similarly the heart and the brain the hand tifilin and the head tifilin the heart is on one side and the brain on the other side upon them is the king's chechenah in four sections rabbi laser said from now on the secrets of the crowns of the letters the sections in their bodies namely their compartments and the straps are an ancient tradition that Moshe received in Sinai they were already explained by illusion namely by the explanation before us and the sense of all this is in the secret of the 13 divine attributes of mercy 196 Rabbi Yehuda said even if we came only for the secret it would have sufficed they said to him happy is your lot in the world to come for no secret is withheld from you they said to him we came before you sir to know the secret of the verse then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Chirab Bereshit 251 197 he said the explanation of this verse is revealed by the friends first in the mission when the soul enters its holy body these words namely then again will be said of the wicked who will be resurrected and make better their deeds and the soul will grant them its precious splendor so they will know repent and have full merit again 198 When Solomon saw this he wondered very much and said and so I saw the wicked buried and come to their rest gone from the holy place Kahilat 810 which means that they will come and live at the holy place namely they will rise at the resurrection of the dead Rabbi Abba quoted Rabbi Yoshan and saying it is written can the Kachai change his skin or the leopard his spots Yermaya 1323 Similarly the wicked who did not deserve to repent in this world and offer good deeds as sacrifices will never burn sacrifices in the world to come though they will rise from the dead they will not be able to do good deeds because they did not lead meritorious lives it is written then again Abraham took a wife and wanted to produce a soul for their bodies and bring them closer in repentance as it is written and the souls that they had made in Charon Bereshit 125 199 Rabbi Lazar said look at the verse and she bore him Zimran and Yochan Bereshit 252 they did many evil deeds until they were Driven from the world as it is written and sent them away from his son its hockey of them it is written and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake Daniel 122 of the others it is written and they who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament of it 3 200 Rabbi Yehuda said this is the meaning of the text indicating that it was called Abraham at one time and is now called its hockey in its place as it is written and it came to pass after the death of Abraham that Elohim blessed his son its hockey and its hockey dwelt by Beelash I ROI lit the well of living and seeing Bereshit 2511 through the knowledge of the living the life of the world he may know and conceive what he had not conceived in this world as it is written for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Hashem Yeshua 119 and of Midrash Hanilam homiletical interpretations on the obscure 201 Rabbi its hockey opened with the verse and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to Elohim who gave it Kahilat 127 come and behold when the Holy One blessed be he created Adam he took the dust from the place of the temple and built his body from the four directions of the world each of which gave him strength later he poured the spirit of life upon him as it is written and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life Bereshit 27 then he stood up and knew that he comprised both high and low he cleaved to Hashem and knew the supernal wisdom 202 similarly all people in the world are included from the upper and the lower when all those who know how to properly sanctify themselves in this world beget a child they draw out a Holy Spirit from that place where all that is holy originates these are called children to the Holy One blessed be he because their bodies were properly made in sanctity he is also given a spirit from the Holy Supernal place as he deserves this has already been explained 203 come and behold when Man is called to account for his deeds before leaving this world. There will be a day of reckoning, a day when both the soul and body give reckoning. The soul then leaves the body and is separated from it, while the body which was created from dust returns to dust and all returns to the place from which it was taken. It has already been explained that everything will be stored before the Holy One, blessed be he, until the time when he resurrects the dead. 204 The Holy One, blessed be he, will return that very body and that very soul to the world as before and renew the face of the world. This is according to the verse The dead men of your people shall live, my dead body shall arise. Yeshua 2619 The same soul is stored before the Holy One, blessed be he, as it returns to its proper place after the death of that person according to its
river that flow out of Eden which is Zeirn and will never stop flowing then it is written the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days Yeshayah 3026 207 Rabbi Shizkiah said if you say that all the bodies in the world will rise to life and wake up from the dust it behooves us to ask about the bodies that were planted with the same soul meaning that one soul incarnated within several bodies one after the other as is known what will become of them will all of them rise at the revival of the dead or only the last one Rabbi Yossi said it is as if the bodies which did not have merit through good deeds and did not succeed in completing the soul never were there as a dry tree in that world and so they will be at the time of the resurrection of the dead only the last body that was planted and worthily received its spiritual roots will be revived at the resurrection of the dead 208 of this is written for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters and its leaf shall be green Yermeo 178 because it bore fruit namely good deeds and struck roots properly above in the upper world each precept corresponds to a spiritual root that is revealed above as is known of the earlier body that did not bear fruit or strike roots it is written for he shall be like the juniper tree in the desert and shall not see when good comes of it 6 when good comes refers to the resurrection of it Dead 209, and the light that will illuminate the righteous will shine it has been stored before him since the day that the world was created as written and Elohim saw the light that it was good Beersheet 13 in the future the holy one blessed be he will revive the dead it is written but to you who fear my name the son of righteousness shall arise etc Malachi 320 for then good will have the upper hand in the world and that which is called evil will pass away from the world as we said then the bodies that preceded the last one will be as if they never existed 210 Rabbi Yitzhak said the holy one blessed be he will pour other spirits upon the bodies that came before the last one they will be properly revived in the world if they merit the spirits by following the right path if they do not they will be ashes under the feet of the righteous as it is written and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake etc Daniel 122 everything was established and prepared before the Holy One blessed be he and all were numbered for the time of resurrection as it is written that brings out their host by number etc. Yeshayah 4026 211 come and behold we have learned that all the dead in the land of Israel will be resurrected first because the Holy One blessed be he will arouse them with the spirit and revive them of them it is written the dead shall live. Yeshayah 2619 this verse refers to those buried in the land of Israel my dead body shall arise refers to those buried in other countries for whom the term restoration is used in place of resurrection this is because the spirit of life dwells only in the Holy Land of Israel therefore the dead man of your people shall live refers only to those buried in the land of Israel the bodies of those outside the land of Israel will be created but they will be resurrected as a body with no spirit thereafter they will roll under the soil of the land until they reach the land of Israel where they will Receive a soul they will not receive the soul under any other authority so they will be well established in the world 212 Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Yesu were sitting one night studying Torah Rabbi Lazer said come and behold in the future when the Holy One blessed be he resurrects the dead all the souls that will be aroused before him will stand before him in the very shape they had in this world and the Holy One blessed be he will bring them down to their bodies and call them by name as written he calls them all by names Yeshua 4026 each soul will enter its place in the body and be properly revived in the world and the world will be perfected of that time it is written and the disgrace of his people shall he take away Yeshua 258 what is the disgrace of his people shall he take away it is the evil inclination that he will remove from the world which darkens the faces of the people and rules over them 213 Rabbi Yossi said we see that whenever the spirit is in a Man he is not defiled once his soul leaves him he is defiled he wanted to know the meaning of this he said to him assuredly this is so we have also learned that when the evil inclination which is the angel of death takes the spirit of man he becomes defiled and the body remains unclean for with the strength of pollution of the tree of knowledge the strength being the root of all defilement it takes away man's soul the reverse is true for the heathen nations they are unclean while they live because their souls are drawn from the side of defilement once their bodies are emptied of that defilement namely when they die and the soul leaves the body stays without unholiness and therefore does not cause defilement Rabbi Shimon said that the canopy graves of the heathen do not defile 214 for that reason he who cleaves to a woman from the heathen nations is defiled and the child that she bears him receives the spirit of defilement you may ask is it not of Israel from the side of its father if so why should it receive the spirit of defilement come and behold first its father was besmirched when he united with that tainted woman all the more so the child that she bears will receive the spirit of defilement upon it furthermore he also transgressed the Torah as it is written for you shall worship no other el for Hashem whose name is jealous is a jealous el Shema 3414 which means that he is jealous of the covenant so that it will not be tainted by heathen women. Section 21 you shall not take a wife of the daughters of the Canaanite the rabbis discuss the dangers of a man marrying a woman of the heathen nations and Abraham's desire that its hot remain in the central column where he would learn the ways of the holy one the relevance of this passage this pertains to the importance of our relationships in life including their effect on the spiritual state of things marriage is the union of two halves of one soul and is considered an Important tool for drawing the light of the upper world's husband into the lower world wife all our actions in this material realm including marital transactions are a microcosm of the ebb and flow relationship endlessly playing out between the physical and metaphysical worlds to secure a personal connection to the macrocosmic level of reality thus ensuring its positive influence in our life we must surround ourselves with those in whom the love of the creator burns strongly rather than those whose godlessness seeks to infect us with unbelief consciousness creates reality people who are not conscious of the creator create for themselves a godless reality devoid of spiritual light whether in business social or marital relationships the zohar helps prevent us from becoming entangled with negative partners and to attract like-minded virtuous people into our life 215 rabbi laser said come and behold we have learned that because abraham had wisdom he wanted to be separated from and not cleave to all other nations therefore it is written and I will make you swear by Hashem the Elohim of heaven and the Elohim of the earth that you shall not take a wife to my son Beersheet 243 the phrase of the daughters of the sea and it surely contains a secret as it is written and has married the daughter of a strange El Malachi 211 in the phrase among whom I dwell Beersheet 243 the I is exactly the same as that mentioned in I have made the earth Yeshua 4512 the I in the first case refers to the Sheshan is it in the second case because she was in exile he made him swear all that so to prevent him from being defiled by them 216 come and behold whoever puts the holy covenant in a woman of a heathen nation causes another place to be defiled namely he blemishes the supernal covenant and causes it to give plenty to the handmaid thus it is written for three things the earth is disquieted Mishlei 3021 and though he made him swear by the covenant Abraham did not yet trust him but prayed before the Holy One blessed be he saying Hashem Elohim of the heaven he shall send his angel before you Beersheet 247 his angel assuredly means the angel of the covenant whom he shall send so that the covenant will be kept and not defiled among the nations 217 he asks the meaning of the verse only bring not my son back there Beersheet 248 he responds that Abraham alone and no one else in his family recognized the Holy One blessed be he Abraham did not want its hawk to dwell among the heathen nations but wanted him to remain with him where he would learn the ways of the Holy One blessed be he Abraham did not want its hawk to turn right or left but rather to remain in the central column for that reason Abraham did not want its hawk's dwelling place to be among the heathen nations 218 Rabbi Yesus said assuredly the merit of Abraham was with the servant for he arrived at the well that very day he went as is written and I came this Day to the well Beersheet 2442 this has already been explained section 22 in Torah is the whole life Rabbi Lazer here emphasizes the importance of Torah study saying that the angel of death has no power over those who are diligent in their study of the scriptures Rabbi Yesa asks why if this is so Moshe died we learned that although Moshe did indeed die his death was not caused by the angel of death instead he cleaved directly to the Sheshanah the divine presence of the creator and went on to eternal life all those who seek and approach the creator we're told are called living because of their diligent study of Torah no reckoning is demanded of them in the world to
contained within it he explained that it is life in this world namely they may merit full days in this world as it is written the number of your days I will fulfill Shema 2326 and one will merit long days in the world to come for this whole life is a life of joy life without sadness life that is real life freedom in this world freedom from everything because other nations cannot rule over anyone who is engaged in the study of Torah 220 you may say that there were those who were persecuted namely the martyrs who were executed for studying Torah when such study was forbidden he answers that this is a decree from above such as the one for Rabbi Akiva and his companions who were killed for studying Torah and so it came to the supreme mind when the world was created but usually studying Torah means freedom from the angel of death who cannot have sway over him assuredly this is so if Adam had cleaved to the tree of life which is Torah death would not have been brought upon him and the whole world but because he pursued the tree of life which is Torah and ate from the tree of knowledge he brought death upon himself and the whole world it was engraved upon the tablets Shema 3216 when the Holy One blessed be he gave Torah to Israel this has already been explained do not pronounce it engraved have Jerah, but freedom have Jerah, because there was freedom from the angel of death if it were not for the children of Israel committing the sin of the calf and leaving the tree of life which is Torah they would not have brought death back to the world and the Holy One blessed be he said I had said your angels all of you sons of the Most High Tehillim 826 namely at the giving of Torah you defiled yourself by sinning therefore you shall die like a man of it seven therefore the evil serpent which darkened the world cannot have power over anyone occupied in the study of Torah 221 Rabbi Yesa said if this is so it should be true that he who does not sin will not die if so why then did Moshe die he said to him Moshe died but the angel of death had no sway over him he did not die by him nor was he defiled by him therefore it is considered that Moshe did not really die but rather that he cleaved to the Sheshana and has gone on to life eternal 222 as such he is called living as we have explained in discussing the verse and Nehu son of Yehoiada the son of a valiant living man 2 Shmuel 2320 whoever approaches Hashem is called living thus he who is occupied in studying Torah has freedom from everything including freedom in this world from the enslavement of even nations and freedom in the world to come for no reckoning will be demanded from him in that world at all 223 come and behold how many supernal mysteries exist in the Torah for that reason it is written she is more precious than pearls Mishlei 315 how many hidden treasures there are in it for that reason when David looked at the Torah in the spirit of wisdom he said open you my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah section 23 behold Rivka came out the Zohar explains that although Rivka was brought up in an evil town and an evil home she was protected by her exceptional soul Rivka is preparing to marry its hawk the Torah story shows that a connection existed between its hawk and Rivka before they were married this is indicated by her coming out at evening time here evening refers to the time of afternoon prayer and we learn that its hawk was in fact performing his afternoon prayers the phrase came out also refers to Rivka's liberation from the house of evil owing to the elevation of her soul the relevance of this passage man is born into this world with untamed desires and animal instincts the will of a man's body is given dominion over his soul so that man can work and strive towards spiritual transformation the evil setting in which Rivka was raised Symbolizes the physical world and our self-indulgent desires each of us can come out of our own house of evil that is remove our own self-centered desires through the energy of Ripka's soul and the power of the patriarch it's hot. all this can be gained through a meditative reading of this passage 224 come and behold and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold Ripka came out Bershi 2415 he asks why is it written came out it should have been written came is it is written Rachel came with her father's sheep Bershi 296 why is it written came out he responded it indicates that the holy one blessed be he brought her away from the people of the town who were all evil she was separated from the townspeople because she was righteous the verse and she went down to the wellhead Hanina Bershi 2416 is spelled with a hey this is a secret because Miriam's well the secret of the Mukbah Zeir and been shining by the illumination of Chakmah chanced. Before her, therefore, that reason to the well is written with a hay which alludes to the nook of the secret of the lower hay of Yud Hay Also, the word Hayna is derived from the word for eyes heavy name, which is a name of Chakma, and the water rose toward Rivka 225. Another explanation is that in the verse, and behold, Rivka came out. The words came out have a similar meaning to that in the verse, and the daughters of the city come out to draw water. Bear she 2413. Why is it written come out rather than go or come? This is an allusion to their proper conduct. They remained at home all day and came out at a specific time toward evening to draw water. Abraham's servant recognized her by the sign 226. Come and behold, when the servant reached Taran and found Rivka at the time of evening, Bear she 2411. It was time for the afternoon prayer at the exact time when it talks at his afternoon prayer. The servant reached Rivka. Rivka came to him again at that. Time when he prayed Minja this is in accordance with the verse and its hawk went out to meditate in the field at the evening time of it 63 this happened so that everything would be in its proper place as indicated by the supernal wisdom therefore the servant reached the well of water which is the secret of the verse a fountain of gardens a well of living water and streams from Levan on Shur Hashirim 415 we established everything to pertain to that secret section. 24 prayer criteria while walking to Tiberias Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Abba are approached by a Jew who has come to seek Rabbi Shimon's wisdom on the subject of prayer as the great Rabbi discourses on the threefold nature of prayer the man asks why the prayers of the patriarchs composed before the temple existed are still considered most important he is told that these prayers are designed to unite Zer and the upper world with his faith and look our lower world after this all else is Superfluous the relevance of this passage prayer is often misunderstood as an offering of thanks and praise to our creator Kabbalistically an omnipotent force of creation has no need for thanks or praise it is because of this misunderstanding that many prayers go unanswered in truth prayer creates a connection between the lower and upper worlds once the connection is established the person praying can draw from a wellspring of spiritual energy to remove unwanted traits and negative attributes from his own nature it is our own negative qualities that prohibit us from attaining permanent fulfillment by strengthening our connection to the upper worlds reading the section endows our prayers with greater power 227 Rabbi Shimon was walking to Tiberias with Rabbi Abba Rabbi Shimon said let us go because a man is about to come to us with new words of Torah Rabbi Abba said I already know that wherever my master goes the Holy One blessed be he sends flying angels to give him Pleasure 228 While they were traveling Rabbi Shimon lifted up his eyes and saw a man who was running they sat down to wait for him when he arrived Rabbi Shimon asked him who are you he responded I am a Jew from the city of Cappadocia and I am going to the hiding place of the son of UK that is to hear hidden matters from him the friends determined and explained certain things and sent me to him to know whether he agrees with them Rabbi Shimon said to him my son talk he asked you are the son of UK he told him I am the son of UK 229 the friends said that when a man prays nothing may come between him and the wall as it is written then Shizkiah who turned his face toward the wall Yeshayah 382 when a man prays no one may come within four cubits of him on every side they said this means four cubits on every side except in front as it is forbidden to come between him and the wall and they said that a man should not pray behind his rabbi they appointed me to hear what you have to say about these matters 230 the Jew opened with the verse hear my prayer Hashem and give ear to my cry keep not silence at my tears Tehillim 3913 he asks why is it written here have Shema and not Shema and why is it written in one place here have Shema Hashem and be gracious to me Tehillim 3011 and in another place Shema the reason is that it is written now Shema referring to the male namely to Zeir Anpin and now Shema referring to the female namely to the Nukbah Zeir Anpin for example Shema is used in here the right Hashem Tehillim 171 where the right Hashem is the secret of the Nukbah Zeir Anpin Shema is used in here have Shema Hashem and be gracious to me as Hashem is the name of Zeir Anpin the masculine is also used in here Hashem as Hashem is the name of Zeir Anpin my son here have Shema the instructions Mishlei 18 and take heed and hearken have Shema Devarim 279 231 here have Shema my prayer Hashem refers to the Nukbah which is the
233 There are three grades of prayer. There are prayer cry and tears as it is written here. My prayer give ear to my cry. Keep not silence at my tears. These correspond to three other grades mentioned at the end of the verse. For I am a stranger with you, then a sojourner, and then all my fathers. Tehillim 3913 Who were the main founders of the world? A stranger corresponds to a prayer. A sojourner to a cry and all my fathers to a tear. 234 Come and behold a man's prayer is done standing up pray. Man can pray in two ways sitting down or standing up which two are one corresponding to the two grades of prayers the hand tefillin and the head tefillin also known as day and night they correspond to the grade of teir and been called head tefillin or day and to the grade of the mukva called the hand tefillin or night and they are one in their union a prayer set sitting down namely the prayers of who has formed the light before the amida is for the sake of the hand tefillin namely for the mukva to fix her as one prepares a bride and adorns her for the chupa marriage canopy thus the mukva is decorated in the secret of the chariots and the troops alluded to in the words who formed ministering messengers ministers who all do stand aloft and the opening wheels and the holy living creatures these are for the adornment of the mukva 235 after the prayer set sitting down which is the decorated mukva enters the presence of the supreme king teir and been, namely during the amida prayer and he Comes to receive her, we stand before the supernal king because Zeir Anpin is united with the Mukva for this reason. It behooves us not to stop between redemption and the prayer as the prayer sitting down and the prayer standing up should be joined. 236. When a man stands before the supernal king, he needs four cubits for his prayer. This is the length of a rope and who forms all in all that pertains to the side of the male. It behooves a man to stand up in the same way whoever kneels. Kneels when pronouncing blessed, which is the secret of the Mukva. Whoever stands up does so when pronouncing the word name, which is the secret of the male, to show the superiority of the male over the female. 237. Come and behold, a man must not pray behind his rabbi's back as it is written, You shall fear Hashem your Elohim. Devarim 613. The particle ET before Hashem indicates that he should fear his rabbi as much as he fears the Shechina and the disciple fears his rabbi, but at the time. A prayer he should place before himself only the fear of the Holy One, blessed be he, and not any other fear. 238 Come and behold, it's hot composed the afternoon prayer as Avraham composed the morning prayer in relation to the grade to which he cleaved, namely the grade of Chesed and the right column. So it's hot composed the afternoon prayer in relation to the grade to which he cleaved, the grade of Bura and the left column. Therefore, the time of the afternoon prayer service is when the sun sets down with its grades to the west, namely immediately after midday. 239 As long as the sun does not set toward the west, it is day that is from morning till noon, as it is written, the kindness of El endures for all time, let all the day. Tehillim 523 You may say that it is considered day until dark, but come and study the verse. Woe to us for the day declines, for the shadows of the evening are lengthened. Yermea 64 For the day declines refers to the morning service as it is written. The kindness lit Jesus of El endures for all the day for then the sun is to the east once the sun sets and declines toward the west it is time for the afternoon prayer because the day declines for the shadows of the evening are lengthened and harsh judgment is upon the world 240 the day declines refers to the grade of Jesus while the shadows of the evening are lengthened refers to the grades of the harsh judgment then the temple was destroyed and the holy of holies burned. Therefore it behooves a man to be careful to attend the afternoon prayer service because it is the time when harsh judgment hovers about the world 241 Yaakov composed the evening service because he fixes the mukva and nourishes her with whatever she needs for the Bava Yudhi Bava which represents Tiferet corrects the Hay of Yudhi Bava which is the mukva and the Hay is nourished by the Bava as the mukva has nothing of herself she receives everything from Tiferet which is the Bava. Of why you behave up, he called Yahya Kob 242. The evening service is optional for this reason, for only as a continuation of the afternoon service does it shine. But now at night there is no time for that, and we have explained that daylight does not shine upon the mukva, and she rules in the dark until midnight when the Holy One, blessed be He, enjoys Himself with the righteous in the Garden of Eden. Then it is time for man to study Torah 243. Come and behold, David came and said, There are three times for services, as it is written, evening and morning, and at noon I pray and cry aloud, and He hears my voice. Tehillim 5518. There are three times in all, but David prayed, and only two of them, as is written, I pray and cry aloud, and no more one is the morning service and the other the afternoon service. Therefore he said, I pray and cry aloud, because I pray suffices for the morning itself, the time of Chesed, but there is need for crying aloud during the afternoon, as it is a time of harsh. Judgment therefore he added and cry aloud but he did not pray at the evening service at midnight he would rise and sing chants and praises as it is written and in the night his song shall be with me. Tehillim 429 this has already been explained 244 Rabbi Shimon rose and they traveled with that man until Tiberius while they were walking Rabbi Shimon said come and behold that prayers correspond to the daily offerings this was established by the sages of the great assembly there are two daily offerings as it is written the one lamb shall you offer in the morning and the other lamb shall you offer at evening. Demidbar 284 and they are offered at the same times each day the times of prayer they established two essential prayers the morning service and the afternoon service the evening service is optional 245 the man said but the patriarchs composed these prayers before the men of the great assembly did and they did not adjust them to correspond to the daily offerings why? Is what Abraham and Itzhak established more important and why is that what Yaakov who is chosen among the patriarchs composed is considered optional and not as essential as those 246 Rabbi Shimon responded this has already been explained yet come and behold the times for the morning and afternoon services are designed to unite Yaakov who is Zeir and with his faith the Mukva once they are united we do not have to do anything else as the Mukva is put between the two arms Abraham and Itzhak which correspond to the right and left column she is joined to the body as the torso is but the inclusion of the two arms and there is no more need to amend anything else thus we should encourage the union of the two arms by observing morning and afternoon prayer services because the Mukva was put between them one needs to draw illumination into the Mukva after she is put between them then the body the central column called Yaakov and the Mukva whisper so as not to mention the aspect of judgment in her 247 for that reason the words are whispered and her voice is not heard and Yaakov serves up high we learn the meaning of a pie is as written in the verse and you Hashem are most high forevermore Tehillim 929 all this is a secret known to those who understand judgment namely for those versed in the mysteries of the Torah Rabbi Abba and the Jew came and kissed the hands of Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Abba said until this day I did not understand this matter only now do I comprehend its meaning blessed is my faith that I deserve to hear it section 25 and its hot brought her into his mother Sarah's tent as Rabbi Yossi opens the discussion of this difficult verse we learn that the images of its hot and Rivka were exactly the same as the images of Abraham and Sarah in both physical and spiritual terms the rabbis then reveal the hidden meaning in the stories of the patriarchs that we are told all lived by the secret of Zir. Anpin and thus each had four wives representing the Sfirat of Chakma by the Tiferet and Malchut of the Mukva of Zir Anpin the entire physical world of the patriarchs was designed to mirror the structure and form of the spiritual dimension thereby creating affinity and attachment to the light of the Creator finally we hear Rabbi Shimon's succinct explanation of the secret of holiness and how all mysteries are really one secret included within the secret of the Mukva of Zir Anpin alone it. Relevance of this passage succeeding generations of mankind are not on the same spiritual level as the patriarchs nevertheless we can still create affinity and attachment to their world and its superior spiritual structure through the mystical words that bespeak their wonders a privilege afforded to us through a thoughtful reading of this passage this attachment invokes the light of Creator removing darkness and iniquity from our existence 248 and its hot brought her into his mother. Sarah's tent, Bereshit 2467, Rabbi Yossi said that this is a difficult verse, it is literally written to the tent, Sarah's mother, but it should have been written Sarah's tent, what is the meaning of to the tent, he says that the Shechinah returned, that is called tent, therefore it says Havala to the tent, which is the Shechinah, for the Shechinah never left Sarah as long as she was in the world, and the candle burned in the tent all the days of the week from
it was seen only by Itzhak when he entered the tent therefore Itzhak was comforted after his mother Beersheet 2467 because his mother was seen and chanced before him in the house therefore it is not written after his mother's death but rather after his mother because she never died for Itzhak 251 Rabbi Shimon then discoursed on the difference in verse that is written of Itzhak and took Ripka and she became his wife and he loved her Beersheet 2467 because it is written that she became his wife we should assume that he loved her as all the inhabitants of the world love their wives what was different here that made it necessary to add and he loved her 252 he answers assuredly the awakening of the love of the male for the female is from the left column as it is written his left hand is under my head sure hashari made three darkness the left column and night the mukbah are as one because the left always arouses love to the mukbah and holds onto her therefore although Abraham loved Sarah it is not written of him and he loved her but only of its who is the left column of Zeirn and if you say however that it is written and Yaakov loved Rachel Beersheet 2918 though he is not of the left column it is because that side of its was included within him 253 come and behold when Abraham the secret of the right column of Zeirn and saw Sarah the mukbah Zeirn and he only embraced her as it is written and his right hand embraces me sure. Hashari made three, but it's hot. The left column of Zeir and her husband took her and put his arm under her head, as it is written, his left hand is under my head. But when Yaakov, the central column of Zeir and arrived afterward, he performed his marital duty and begot twelve tribes. All is as it should be. Two hundred and fifty-four come and behold, the patriarchs all lived by one secret, namely the secret of Zeir and Therefore, they each had four wives, representing Shachma by Netiphera and Malchut of the Mukbav. Zeir and Abraham also had four wives, Sarah Hagar and two concubines, as it is written. But to the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Bereshit two hundred and fifty-six. It is written, concubines, which means two, and together with Sarah and Hagar, there were four. Two hundred and fifty-five. It's also had four wives, all contained within Ripka, as it is written, and took Ripka, which is one, and she became his wife, which is two, and he loved her, which is three, and Itzhak was comforted after his mother, which is four. Correspondingly, Yaakov had four wives, and all of them, the twelve wives, are one secret, namely the Mukbah of Zeir and alone, who contained all twelve aspects. 256 Rabbi Shia said that Abraham and Itzhak each performed their marital duties with one wife on the side of holiness because Hagar and the concubines were not of holiness. Abraham did so with Sarah and Itzhak with Ripka. In comparison, Yaakov had four wives, two each representing the holy and the not holy Leah and Rachel. Represented holiness, Bilhah and Zilpha represented the not holy that he changed to holy. Rabbi Shimon said that these matters have reached their proper place in holiness. Even Hagar and the concubines were part of the secret of holiness, as Rabbi Shimon explains that the twelve women were but twelve aspects of the Mukbah, for everything is done in the secret of holiness, and all is one secret, namely all of them are included within the secret of the Mukbah of Zeir and alone. Section 26 Then again Abraham took a wife. Here we learned that Shirah Abraham's wife was really Hagar who had atoned for her transgressions and had taken a new name reflecting this atonement. The rest of the discussion focuses on the meaning of Abraham's bequest to its hawk of all that he had. We're told that the two patriarchs should be included one within the other since they represent the right and left columns in the secret of supernal faith which is by the relevance of this. Passage man is endowed with three unique forces of intelligence the desire to receive, the desire to share, and the free will to choose and manage between the two. Desire to share is termed right column by the Zohar. Abraham is the embodiment of right column and its particular sharing intelligence. Desire to receive is termed left column and its hawk is the vessel that expresses its energy of receiving. The absence of either column creates an extreme imbalance thus sharing without receiving. Quickly depletes our resources if we pour water from a glass to share with others without replenishment the glass will soon be empty and receiving without sharing is like casting a dehydrated man into the middle of the sea though he is in desperate need of water the overabundance eventually drowns him reading the section has a stabilizing effect on our spirituality and on the decisions we make intuitively our choices begin to strike a delicate balance between knowing when to share and when to receive 257 then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Chara Beershi 251 Chara is Hagar for we learned that after Hagar separated from Abraham and heard after her father's idol she repented and was associated with good deeds for that reason her name was changed to Chara which alludes to her good deeds for Chara means connected then Abraham sent and took her for a wife from this it is understood that changing a name atones for transgressions because her name was changed to Shara after she atoned for her since 258 in the phrase that again Abraham what is meant by again let he added if you say that Abraham took another wife in addition to Sarah this is not so rather in the days of Sarah he had already made it once with Hagar and then drove her away because of the deeds of Yishmael who mocked its hot the word again means that he took her again a second time because she atoned for her evil deeds as a result her name was changed and she was called Shara. 259 come and behold Rabbi Lazar said about the verse and its hot brought her into his mother Sarah's tent bear she 2467 that the image of Sarah was revealed with Ripka's arrival and its hot was comforted by the image of his mother which he saw every day although Abraham married he did not enter Sarah's house nor did he allow that woman to enter because a handmaid cannot be heir to her mistress no other woman was seen in Sarah's tent except for Ripka 260 and although Abraham knew that Sarah's image was revealed there he left the tent to Itzhak so he could see the image of his mother daily Itzhak not Abraham saw her image this is the meaning of the verse and Abraham gave all that he had to Itzhak Beershi 255 all that he had alludes precisely to the image of Sarah that was inside the tent for he gave it to Itzhak to look at her 261 another explanation of the verse and Abraham gave all that he had to Itzhak is that he gave him a secret of it. Supernal faith which is Bina so that Itzhak would be attached to his appropriate grade if he had not given him a secret of Bina he would not have been able to cleave to the left column come and behold fire which is left is here included within water which is right assuredly fire took water is left included right within it this is understood from the verse and Abraham gave all that he had to Itzhak this is water included within fire as Abraham who is the secret of water gave his aspect. To Itzhak the secret of fire at first fire was included within water when was that when Abraham bound Itzhak to execute judgment upon him namely to sacrifice him and fire was included within water now water is included within fire so that all will be in the secret of the supernal faith which is Bina for the two columns right and left in Bina were included within each other then they reached perfection therefore both Abraham and Itzhak who are drawn from the two columns in Bina should also be included within one another first the left was included within the right at the time of sacrifice and now when Abraham gave all he had to Itzhak the right was included within the left section 27 but to the sons of the concubines Abraham gave gifts this very brief passage discusses questions relating to the concubines of Abraham Rabbi Shia maintains that the term does not allude to Chara one of Abraham's wives but there is no unanimous agreement. In section 26 of the Zohar we're told that Abraham gave all that he had to his son Itzhak here it is said that Abraham now gave gifts to the sons of the concubines it is speculated that these sons then went on to become great sorcerers and mystics living in the east the relevance of this passage the seemingly simple section of Zohar sheds light on the origins of spiritual disciplines found in the Far East the Zohar tells us that Abraham gave everything he had to his son Itzhak. Thereafter the patriarch gave gifts to the sons of his concubines and sent them to live in the east clearly the Zohar is not referring to material items for if Abraham gave away all his physical possessions to his son Itzhak there would be nothing left to give to the sons of his concubines a candle flame provides an analogy one candle can share its flame and light with countless others without ever diminishing itself the Zohar is referring to the light of wisdom when speaking of Abraham's Possessions and gifts the term all that he had pertains to the complete wisdom of Kabbalah also known as the three column system these three columns are the pillars of all spiritual wisdom the gifts given to the sons of the concubines refer to other spiritual teachings that offered their own unique pathway to the light of the creator described accordingly as one and two column spiritual systems the sons of the concubines we're told were sent by Abraham to live in the east where to this
elevated above them all in the proper supernal faith which is Bina 263 the sons of the concubines are the children of Chirah who is called concubines because she was a concubine before Abraham sent her away and was a concubine now that he took her back again Rabbi Shia said that this alludes to actual concubines and in no way does it allude to Chirah and sent them away from his son its hakibit so that they would not have control over its hak while he had lived while Abraham was alive and well in this world this way they would not quarrel with him later and its hak would be strengthened and subjugate everyone before him eastward to the east country of it because one finds there all kinds of witchcraft 264 come and behold it is written and Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country I may lash him 510 these are the sons of the concubines of Abraham it was said that those who teach sorcery to men are found in these east mountains and from the east country came Laban via his son Bilam and all the sorcerers as has already been explained section 28 who gave Yaakov for a spoil here the rabbis discuss the above verse and its various intricate meanings which relate both to the time of the exile and the time of the resurrection when the creator will rebuild the temple we learn that these stories are all really metaphors for the spiritual work of unification which is always here and now the relevance of this passage the Torah and Zohar are not books of recorded history or mystical fables of antiquity rather both are links to the upper world which connect man to the fountainhead and primal source of spiritual light each passage offers a particular blend of energy that can be put to use in the present moment here the spiritual influence to hasten the final redemption quicken the resurrection and accelerate the process of rebuilding the temple is summoned forth through the Letters forming these verses all three happenings will occur both individually and globally thus every individual has his own rock in the temple which becomes manifest through personal acts of spiritual elevation 265 Rabbi Shizkiah opened with the verse who gave Yaakov for a spoil and Yisrael to the robbers did not Hashem Yishayah 4224 come and behold from the time the temple was destroyed no blessings hovered about the world they stopped as if detained above in the upper world's end. Below in the lower worlds all these lower grades were strengthened and ruled over Yisrael because Yisrael had brought it about by their transgression this absence of blessings in the upper worlds occurred because the lower ones were not worthy of receiving them and all the abundance that they should have given to the lower worlds was withheld for there was no one to give to 266 this verse contains a contradiction it is written who gave Yaakov for a spoil and Yisrael to the robbers did. Not Hashem he against whom we have sinned after it said who gave Yaakov for a spoil and Yisrael why does it continue with we have sinned it should have said they sinned namely it should have used the third person and not spoken as if they were talking for themselves since it said we have sinned namely they refer to themselves why does it continue with they would not walk in which he uses the third person again instead of saying we would not walk as if they were speaking for themselves 267 he answers that when the temple was destroyed the holy of holies burned and the people were exiled the Sheshanah wanted to move from her place and go into exile with them the Sheshanah said I will first go and see my house and palace and visit the places of the priests and the levites who worshipped in my house 268 Rabbi Lazar said that at the same time the congregation of Israel the Sheshanah looked up and saw that her husband Zeir and Pin had left her and ascended up. I she went down entered the temple and looked at places she wept and the sound was heard up above in heaven and below on earth this is the meaning of the verse a voice was heard up high lamentation and bitter weeping Rachel weeping for her children Yermea 3114 this has been explained 269 when she went into exile she looked at the people and saw how they were pushed and trampled under the feet of other nations in exile and she said who gave Yaakov for a spoil and Yisrael responded did not Hashem he against whom we have sinned in this it is understood that he speaks for himself the Sheshana asked and in whose ways they would not walk and to whose Torah they were not obedient Yeshayah 4224 thus the question of why it is written in the third person is again settled 270 when the Holy One blessed be he visits his people the congregation of Israel to take them out of exile the Sheshana will return first and go to the temple because the temple will be Built before the gathering of the exiles where the dwelling of the Sheshana rests therefore the Sheshana is also anxious to get out of exile and the Holy One blessed be he said to her rise from the dust but the Sheshana responded with her do I go my house is destroyed and my palace is burned this will continue until the Holy One blessed be he will first rebuild the temple fix the palace and establish the city of Jerusalem only then does he raise the Sheshana from the dust as it is written. Hashem builds Jerusalem Tehillim 1472 then he gathers together the outcasts of Israel of it and tells her shake yourself from the dust arise and sit down O Jerusalem Yeshua 422 then he gathers the exiles of Israel thus it first says Hashem builds Jerusalem and then he gathers together the outcasts of Israel then he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds Tehillim 1473 which refers to the resurrection of the dead and it is written and I will put my spirit within you and Cause you to follow my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Yashiskal 3627 blessed is Hashem forever. Amen. Amen.